Welcome to the WC Web TV pregame show. Now, here we are in Brookhaven yet once again. You know what? It's kind of fun coming over here, don't you think? I like going to the dentist or something. <laughs> no, I mean, I, yes, sometimes it's painful to come over here, but, you know, um, it always, especially in the playoffs, it always seems to be classic. These two teams have met three times in the playoffs. Twice they've gone into overtime. And, uh, you know, sometimes Brookhaven appeared to be the stronger team, other times Wayne County, but it really doesn't seem to matter. You know, a couple of years ago in uh, the regular season, Brookhaven missed a field goal right down here, and Wayne County came out of here with a 17-15 win, you know. Uh, those playoff games, 04, uh, 10, I mean, there have just been some classic games, and, and I hope tonight will be the same. I do, too, and if it is, that's going to say a lot about our kids. This bunch from, from, from Brookhaven's lost one, and it was the first one, and it was to Pearl, who was nationally ranked at the time and may still be. So, you know, they've got 10 wins in a row. This is a mighty good football team we're looking at tonight. Yeah, there's, a, there, there's three three ways you can describe them big fast and good uh, and they are they're all of those they're, they're they're big on the offensive line they're big on the defensive line uh, linebackers run to the football cornerbacks come up and hit you uh, running backs are good their skill people are good and this quarterback is a kid we watched for the last couple of years and uh, we beat on him a little bit so tonight's his opportunity to, to get a little payback you know uh, I used to play a card game coming up Call 52 card pickup. We just yeah. throw the cards up. Wayne County's been playing that uh, with their starting, with their, <laughs> yeah. starting line this year. Yeah. One thing you can say about this bunch is they are, uh, you know, a character never quits. And uh, they've never quit and they fought and they proved it last week behind and half came back, big second half. So, you know, one thing the world is going to bring, even though it may, we may not be sure who's going to be playing, they'll be giving it their all tonight. They will. And, you know, Especially in that second half last week, whenever I got home, I, I told my wife Doris, I said, in that second half, they played War Eagle football. And it didn't matter who was out there on the field. They played the kind of football that fans have gotten used to. Now, on the flip side, a lot of these seniors over on that other sideline, they were freshmen in playing. You know, they were in that role, and they took their lumps. And, you know, now they're playing that kind of football and you know they're looking to pay some people back and I mean you know and and Todd Mangum never ran up the score on them you know not intentionally but you know they're looking to establish themselves because they have taken their lumps the last two three years and now they're they're wanting to administer some lumps hopefully Wayne County can play like they did in that second half on Friday last Friday night and administer some lumps in retaliation. All indications are and on paper, you know, this is Brookhaven's time to shine. There's no question about that. But we're going to play a football game out here tonight, Kenny, and the Warriors are going to give it their best. What do they need to do? What does Wayne County need to do to win tonight? They need to play the best game they've played all year. Uh, this will need the very, the very best. I mean, this is uh, this is a ragtag bunch of volunteers. I mean, it's uh, there's just nothing fancy or special about us, and uh, you know, it's all been individual play together, if that makes any sense. I mean, it's been trying to find individuals that they could get to play together. You know, with all injuries, I mean, 14 guys out, you got what three of them back, and uh, none of them are the three are full speed. So, uh, well, it'd be 15 if we count the kid we lost last week. So. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those things where, you know, we've just, they've, they've held it together with bailing wire and, and, uh, and uh, you know, yeah, bubble gum and, uh, you know, some duct tape. And, uh, and so tonight, for them to have a chance, this ball game, a chance to win it, they got to play the best game they played all year. Talking to Coach Mangum, he's talking about having fun. And, you know, that's really one thing they need to do tonight. And if you're having fun, you're usually having success. You want to cl close this segment out for us? You're right. I mean, and if you saw them in that second half last Friday, they were having fun. And at the end of the game, you know, you could see it in their faces. And and I hope that Wayne County wants that feeling, that those kids in that locker room right now, they want that same kind of feeling this Friday night that they had last Friday night. And hopefully they can come out and advance to the second round. 
Yeah. What's that playing on the radio, K Dog? <laughs> I believe that's uh, played at Davis Wade Stadium. <laughs> Don't stop believing. Don't stop believing. Well, we're not stopping believing. We're going to play some football tonight. We're going to take a break, and we're going to be back with the head coach of the War Eagles, Todd Mangum, after this word from our sponsors. You have to be. Welcome to the uh, WC Web TV show. Paul King's got me all messed up. It's not hard to do, but anyway, what we got right here is we got the head coach of the War Eagles, and that's all that matters, Todd Mangum. Coach Mangum, uh, zero is zero. Man, that's what everybody is. You said that, I think, last week. You know, we start the playoffs, and here you have brought your charges to the playoffs yet once again, and over to a familiar place over here, Brookhaven, a great place for high school football. Oh, it is. There's been a lot of, a lot of great games between Wayne County and Brookhaven uh, here, and uh, it's, uh, it's really, a, really a great place, great environment. Uh, they'll have a lot of fans that's going to pack it out tonight, and it's a really great place for a high school football game. Let's talk about the Panthers for a minute when we look at them offensively. You know, I was looking at them. They were very well balanced, appear to be throwing the ball, and they have a really good two-headed monster and running the football. I know they've had some injury problems along the way. We know how that works. But what can we expect out of them offensively tonight? Well, it all starts up front, and I tell you, when the ball is snapped, it's really impressive to watch their offensive line, and it's a really good unit, and it's – it's anchored by by Coach Clopton's son Trace. I mean, at center, and he's a uh, he's kind of the anchor point there. But those guys do a outstanding job up front uh, on the offensive line, and they're really really skilled at quarterback. Uh, quarterback that guy's been starting since he was a freshman, I and uh, you know he's uh, he's grown up and uh, really good at tailback. Uh, so, uh, but it all starts up front. That's the thing that impresses you the most uh, is their offensive line. Yeah, I was talking about Coach Compton's son just recently committed to USM, and I think they had another kid, Jones, I believe, committed to USM this week, so they're pretty heavy uh, D1 talent laden. Now, let's cross over to the other side of the line of scrimmage and talk about their defense for a minute. They, uh, they got a lot of sacks and a lot of picks, I know that, but tell us a little about the defense. Well, there, there's where you go again up front uh, defensively uh, is where it starts. Really good up front and in the secondary, very, very athletic, very, very aggressive. Uh, you know, saw on film there where uh, uh, the free safety makes uh, uh, makes a tackle on the quarterback on a bootleg pass, uh, and he starts out 12 yards deep. So really, really talented uh, back there in the secondary. But uh, again, it's up front, and that's the strength of their team or their their fronts, uh, both offensively and defensively. We come across to our guys, and I guess if you could say one thing about our guys is. Uh they uh, have a tremendous will. They never quit, and uh, they keep fighting. Uh, what are you going offensively tonight? I mean, you know, we ran the ball last week mighty good. I feel sure you'd like to have that kind of success tonight. Yeah, no <laughs> doubt about it. Uh, we can, but hey, you know, with the playoffs, we're fixing to, uh, you know, just uh, you know, let let it go right here, you know. And it's uh, it's down to a one game season. Uh, you know, everybody is zero and zero now, uh, and and you know, we're just uh, just. Hey, let it rip, and, and, and let's just play. Play ball and have some fun. This is a game, and it's supposed to be fun. That's it? it. That's <laughs> it. Listen, we appreciate you. We're going to see you after the game. We're going to take a break to hear from some of our sponsors and be back with Wayne County High School War Eagle football after this break. Uh, welcome to round one of the MHSAA Class 5A football playoffs. That's right. Wayne County is in, here, and ready to go, Kenny, for another, uh, another exciting playoff football for Wayne County. Over here. Yes, it's, it's, it's customary for us to be here. And thank goodness we made it. We made Looks like we made it, and here we are. Our captains tonight are uh, Zabrian Jackson and, and uh, Quentin Bivens. And how appropriate is that with the season these two guys have had? Well, they're the last two survivors. <laughs> they haven't moved you about the lone survivor. Well, this is the lone two survivors. <laughs> Our super fans tonight, we talked about them during the uh, pregame show, but our super fans and our super fans help make all the broadcasts possible. We've got the whole family of them, the den of them, the nest of them, the Millers. That's Elmer, Freddie, and Tommy Miller. We give a shout out to them tonight and thank them and all of our super fans for the help in making these broadcasts possible. Wayne County has uh, won the toss and decided, Kenny, that they want the football tonight. 
Yeah, it's going to be a great start, we hope, offensively for Wayne County. Want to send out a hello tonight. Tony Bishop sitting on the patio uh, listening to the ball game and also the little man. He's starting to learn how to understand a little of this stuff. <laughs> well, I know he's going to be in for a bunch of football when he comes down to his uh, grandfather here. Kenny, and here comes Wayne County on the turn. As Arrington's got, takes the ball deep inside the five and gets out about the 20. Might have crossed over to the 21. So Wayne County's going to be in business with a first and 10. Just get this playoff underway. And as uh, Ryan Jackson and company will be coming out here and seeing if uh, they can pick up where they left off last week with a big big running attack. 450 some yards on the ground last week. But this is uh, probably a little different set up. Then. <laughs> yeah, I feel, we'll go to defense. I mean, these guys are big. I mean, they're big and they're tough. Uh, you look at number, I think it's what, 64 there? Yeah. And, uh, his shadow probably weighs 46 pounds. Oh, my that goodness. Guy crushed a small chihuahua that ran behind him one day. <laughs> Jackson is your quarterback, and uh, the freshman is going to be your running back, and there's going to be a jet sweep fake pass down here to uh, Darius Royal. Makes the catch, and he's out of close to midfield, Kenny. It's, uh, they did a little toss, and they right to midfield, a little trick right out there off the bat, and it worked. Well, it uh, got us kind of up and running here, and it'll get us... Uh, Get us to midfield, Marshall. I'm not sure. That might have been Riley Ballard that threw that pass. I'm, I'm number five. I'm not sure. But anyway, uh, Williamson is your running back again. Two receivers both ways. Ballard's in motion the other way. He's going to hand it to uh, Bell. Jackson's going to pull it and make the toss out there to the uh, receiver. That's Ballard. That's a nice run around the left side. And I don't know, Kenny, he may have another first down. He's down inside the 40, close to the 35-yard line. Yeah, he got the first down plus some. Uh, little something we hadn't ran much of, Marshall. That's the old option. And a good job by Zabrian to, to uh, read the end and pitch. First and, time uh, they've done it, too, with Ballard. They're throwing a new rank of personnel-wise at, at Brook Haven. Yeah, I believe they've got the ball on the 36-yard line. All right, first and 10 for the Royals. And Jackson's moving to his right. Just run all the way, and he's going to try to get on the corner and turns it inside and gets probably a couple of yards on a first down carry. So he's inside the 35, maybe to the 34, but... It's going to bring up down, uh, going to bring up down, it's going to bring up second down, about nine yards to go, it looks like, for the Warriors inside uh, Brookhaven territory. Here they all lined up. Wayne County's got the pedal to the middle. They're not slowing down. Well, that's all right. You know, with this Brookhaven bunch, you better get what you can while you can. Trips left, single man to the right, this wall to the right by himself. Williamson's still in the backfield, the freshman running back. He's uh, back to throw. There goes a toss down the field trying to get the Royal down here about the six or seven yard line. This is incomplete. So Wayne County's pulling out all the stops early. The Royal looks like he may be limping a little bit. Yeah, I think he, he got, a, got a little grippy there after that, that, that reception to uh, open up the ball game. 39 for the Warriors. Page and batter to left. And uh, Royal's out here to the right. Split. The right Warriors moving the left to right on the right hash mark with a third down and nine. All right, Jackson's going to turn it up field and try to get some yards. This well defended, Kenny, he might get one. The well, linebacker made him there, did a good job just to scull up stop. That was really well played. So, Wayne County's looking at a fourth down and looks like they're sitting the punting unit on. So, uh, fourth down in the back. Of course, now Wayne County has had a lot of success. We talked about in the pregame show converting on fourth downs, but we'll see if they decide to punt it. And uh, Busby's on the punt away. He's done a real good job filling in for Heath. There's a good snap. There's going to be a punt, and I tell you what, that may turn out well. This hit the ground. He hits a uh, hit the Brookhaven return, man. But Brookhaven got on it and got the ball at about the 11 yard line. So hadn't been for that guy down there, number number five, I think it was from Brookhaven. He just turned and fell on. He sure did. Well, I tell you, I almost got a huge break right there. But Brookhaven uh, has got the ball for their first possession of the night. It'll be spotted down at about the 12 yard line. It'll be first. First and 10, Panthers at the Old Brook. First and 10 from the 12. We're at 10.08 to go in the first quarter. Wayne County uh, had a little success there offensively, doing some really uh, unusual things with the work. They, they executed it perfectly. And now here comes the war of the defense. And see how they can handle this. Coach Mangum said you just need to watch this offensive line. So they're just phenomenal the way they play. And we're going to find out. And there's going to be a handoff around the right side. And there they go with a big hold. They're going to get out across the 20, I do believe. 
Well, close to a first down. Yeah, I'll tell you what, boy, they just beat everybody in the edge and turned across the field. It looks like he picked up about nine yards. Nine that, yards. that was Logan. He's an 8.8 .8 per carry guy. And you're right, second one, trips left for the uh, – the quarterback that play is going to four, he's a four-year starter. He started as a freshman. He's a senior this year, so he's got a lot of experience. And there's going to be a handoff uh, straight up the middle, and uh, Wayne County is going to play it pretty well. There's going to be a first down. He's going to get to about the 24, 25-yard line. First and 10th for Old Brook, with 9.28 to go, and the score is first quarter. Let's see up front. we got Bibbins, we got Sibley, and we got Lee Van Davis is up front. We got Perry Ante North where they play some linebacker tonight. We lost Riley River on another uh, casualty this year, one of the leading tacklers. He got hurt and he's out, so they moved Perry Ante back to linebacker tonight. He's over there to Lee. There goes uh, number one again around the right side, breaking the tackle or two, getting across the 30. That's Leggett on the carry. He's going to bring up second down about three yards to go for Old Brook. You have just a just a uh, little misdirection play where he stepped one way and then turned went the other. Smith and Hill are a couple of defensive backs. Rob Watkins is out there. Uh, Jeremy Reed is playing linebacker. We'll get some more of these guys. Malik Briggs is back there in the defense as a safety for the Royals. There's going to be a quarterback keep at the middle. He's got a little running room there, and he's going to get himself a first down across the 35 to the 36-yard line. So 8.25 to go in the score this first quarter. No books come from the 12. Uh, very methodical. You need to really run that, run that uh, off that side. Yeah, nothing fancy just, uh, just going at you and around you. Arrington's uh, one of your defensive backs. He's one of your corners. Watkins, Reed, and uh, Norris really lying back in for you here tonight. First and ten for Old Brook at the wrong 36-yard line. He's going to be legged again, and he's going to try to get on the corner right here. Wayne County's going to get after him and tackle him. I don't know if he got to the line of scrimmage or not. Rod Watkins is back there on the play, and there's Jeremy Sibley out there. Well, just a good play. I mean, we did a good job to stretch it out and uh, get out there and get a little help. Jock West Turner out there on another defensive lineman out there making a play as well, so got a hold and call against Brookhaven. Mm -hmm. All right. Take the ball back down to the 26-yard line. First and 20 to go from the round 26, I believe. This is somewhere there about so 7.50 to go and I score this first quarter. Thirteen seconds on the twenty-five second clock. I tell you what, we got a good crowd here tonight that's showing up to support the War Eagles. That's really nice to see. Wasn't a big crowd last week, and uh, go show, but a good crowd of War Eagles here tonight. Moving the right, there's a handoff up the middle of the leg. He's got a little room, Kenny, and here he goes. He's across the forty. He's uh, being drugged down and by uh, Smith. As he gets into no, excuse me, that's Steve Stephon Ford on the on the tackle. Got play. Got him inside. Yeah, it looked really good. Got him inside the Warrior territory down here about the 48. It was a well run, and that's what you expect out of this bunch. And that was a nice 26 yards. Nice hole for him to run in. So first down and 10. Old Brooks on the move. Four man front for the Warrior defense. Morgan County's doing a lot of shuffling out there tonight through the season. Legged again trying the right side and they kind of string him out but he gets the corner and turns that field and looks like he's going to get close to the 40. So that's going to bring up a second down. Gregory Robinson's checking in for Wayne County as number 96. Jacquez Turner checks out. Second down, about three yards to go for Old Brook. Is there uh, right about the Warrior 41? 6.52 to go in the score of this first quarter. But the Old Brook is on the drive here. He's going to be the quarterback keeper all the way, and uh, Jeremy Reed's going to get him at a, about the 35, but it will be a first and 10 for Old Brook. Yeah, the only two folks that have touched the ball so far for Brookhaven have been uh, the running back and the quarterback. Yeah. Well, it's a 6'1", 185-pounder. 
He looks a lot bigger than that. But anyway, that's what they got him listed at. He's running large out there tonight, Kenny. He sure he is. Okay, he's got a lot of speed, really quick. They're getting a good edge block on our guys on the ends. Back to throw. There's a pass out here. A little flat pass, and here he goes. And uh, inside the 15, they're going to tackle him to be a first down for the Warriors, and that's number nine on the catch. That's Don uh, Brandon. He's got uh, 28 catches for a 13.3 yard average and five TDs on the year. Panthers are in the red zone. The first and ten at the 15 yard line. The Warriors with 16 and counting to go in the first quarter. Nice 20-yard game. They started this drive uh, to around 11 on 12-yard line. And here they come to the line of scrimmage. Quarterback's going to keep it, and uh, Quentin Bivens is going to get a hand on him and get help from Robinson and uh, oh, that was, a yard. Yeah, number 26 also, Shontavious Smith. So, like Kenny said, they got him behind the line of scrimmage. Quentin broke through there and got a big paw on him and held on to the good little help from uh, the little fella. <laughs> we got to have a lot more of that to slow this bunch down. <laughs> Second and 11 to go from the 16-yard line of the War Eagles. In the red zone, Old Brook finds itself. Quarterback's moving to his right. He may go and pull it up and throw it, and he does down there, and it's going to be incomplete. So it's going to bring up third down and 11 to go for Old Brook. Third down and 11 for the Panthers. 5-16 to go in the first quarter. Scoreless first quarter. Wayne County had the first possession, had some nice plays, and got down and punted it, and almost got on a fumble. Left punt down there around the 12, but Old Brook got it, and as methodically marched down here in the red zone, find themselves uh, at the Warrior 11 with a, with a third and 11. Inside uh, eight seconds on the 25-second clock. I believe we're going to take a time out. We're going to take a 30-second time out to the station and be back after this word from our sponsor. Stands tonight. And I'll tell you what, Kenny, this is, this is, this is what football is supposed to feel like when you're watching the game in the stands. It's cold. It's a night area. <laughs> As the old folks used to say. All righty. Here comes Old Brook. Wayne County's got their defense set and ready to go. Old Brook's are looking at a third and uh, 11 from the Royal 16. Trips right for the Panthers. Moving to the right. Quarterback's looking to throw. There's some pressure. Looks like he might have been held, but he didn't call it. No, oh, my goodness. It's almost intercepted in the end zone, and the ball falls incomplete. Fourth and 11. Wayne County had a pretty good uh, coverage down there, Kenny. Well, they did now with the ball on the 16. Uh, you can try field goal, or you can go for it. Looks like Brook uh, Haven is going to line up and try to kick this. Kicker's number 24, Marshall. Okay. I'm going to spot that ball down there at the 23-yard line, so it'll be a 33-yard field goal attempt from the left hash. There's the snaps. Good snap. Kick is up. I don't know. Can you let's look? It may be good. Fair. So, <laughs> it was close. Three to nothing. Old Brook with 5.04 to go in the first. Here's a 30-second break to the station, and we'll be back after this word from our sponsors. Kenny, that was a pretty impressive opening drive for the uh, Panthers. About 80, what about? So 12 plays, and they started at their 12, so uh, an 88-yard drive. Well, but it ended in a, uh, well, not 88 yards, I'm sorry, 16 from there would be, what, 70, 64. All right, there's going to be a kiss. It's going to be fielded down there at about the one-yard line. There comes Edgerton out with it. He's on that sideline over there. Kenny fighting hard, and... We're going to have a pretty decent return. Let's see. We're going to be out across the 25-yard line, I do believe. We'll see. 23-yard line, my bad. So, Arrington on the return. That kicker uh, is pretty good. He's kicked two down there inside the five. And Arrington was backed up right to the goal line when he caught that thing. He's had some success returning the football this year. J.J. Walker's checking in this time. And he's also in the backfield with... Uh, W.C. Washington, so we got the, well, J.J.'s checking out. They're going with W.C. W.C. Washington's running back. Williamson started running back. 
They're going to hand the ball out to go to see if middle. He's breaking tackles and running hard out across the 35. Got a first down from Wayne County right up the middle, okay, dog. Well, that's uh, just nothing but just straight up. That's all you can do is run straight at him. Marshall, he gets out to around the 36, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. A couple of weeks ago, uh, J.J. had a, I mean, excuse me, uh, W.C. had 101 yards rushing. I think his first 100-yard game. He's Seniors coming here tonight, ready to go. And he stays back there in the backfield. First and ten, Wayne County. They're going to hand it to him. No, Jackson's going to keep it good on the left side. Turn up real Kenny. He's got himself out across midfield for another Roy Eagle first down. He's going to, yeah, he'll cross midfield, get to the 49. Boy, just a great run by Zabrian. Faked it to WC up the middle and around the, around the corner. I can't tell you, this, this Zamarian Jackson. I'm just crazy about this kid. He has uh, played so hard for so long, as all of them have. And he's played through turf toe and everything else, and he's still going. First and 10, Wayne County, right inside the uh, Panther side of the midfield. There's the toss back here, the catch. And, Harris has got the catch. He's having a struggle to get to the line of scrimmage, but he does and gains about four yards out of it. Boy, he's, I tell you what, he lowered his shoulder and just went into that big kid coming up as a safety spot, free safety for Brookhaven, and he earned that, that four-yard gain. That safety from Brookhaven, if I'm not mistaken, just committed to the University of Southern Mississippi yesterday. He runs about a 4 4 40. So, uh, <laughs> he's a good one. All righty, here we go again. Warriors with a second down and five yards to go at the 46. Of uh, Brookhaven. W.C. Washington stays in at running back. Jackson's going to hand the ball to W.C. Washington. He's going to find a pretty tough sled and works to work real hard to get back to the line of scrimmage. He's going to bring up third down about five with four minutes to go. Inside four minutes to go in the first quarter. Yeah, just uh, wasn't much there. They did a good job of penetrating, whipping outside of the line of scrimmage over there. And, uh, just, uh, I mean, just effort. That's all it was. It's just pure effort by the defense for Brookhaven. All righty. Two receivers both ways. Forward Jackson. Washington uh, is in the backfield with him. 3.36 to go in the first quarter. Road woke up 3 to nothing. Jackson straight back to throw. He's going to fire one as a slant to Harris. He makes the catch. Kenny's working his way for a first down and then some as he's breaking tackles and running inside the 30. Be close to the 25-yard line. Maybe right on it. So another first down for the War Eagles. Well, that's an old tunnel screen. When you run back up the tunnel up under a bunch of guys and uh, rather than break it to the outside, he broke it back toward the middle of the field and uh, just did a good job to pick his way and fight down for yardage inside the 30. And as you said, Marshall, I think the 25. All right, first. First and 10 for the Warriors. Demetrius Harris Jr., number seven on the reception and a powerful run. He had a big run on that revert, on that uh, handoff he took earlier too. So the only option. Yeah, bringing his A game. There's going to be a jet sweep around the right side. That's better. He's got some room. Ken, here he goes. He's at the 10-yard line for another first down. Excuse me. That's Derek. That's Joshua Page. Number yeah, 12. Joshua Page. Yeah. Joshua did a good job cutting off his blocks. Marshall he picks up 15 yards. Should be a, if it's not a first and 10, it'll be a first and goal. At the 11, first at and 10 at the 11. With 2.55 to go in the first quarter, the War Eagles are knocking on the door. Oh, Brooks had a long drive and got a field goal out of it. Here come the War Eagles, trips left. That's going to be a handoff to W.C. Washington up the middle, and he's going nowhere. He probably will be at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, not much there, boy. Brookhaven did a good job to stop that up. Penetration from the inside. You know, you, you know, we, we talk about all the losses we've had this year. We lost our, our, our kicker, our field goal kicker, you know, mostly a few weeks ago. And might come, might be handy to have him down here, but we don't have him. We're going to play what we got. There's Jackson up the middle. Kenny, he could go. He's a he touchdown. So Brian Jackson in the Wayne County High School. War Eagles take the lead with 2.24 to go in the first quarter. How about them apples? Boy, just a great run. It was designed quarterback to draw the whole way, and he did a good job with the fake and then just turned right straight up the middle of the field and ran his way into the end zone. Busby's on to try the PAT to put him up 7-3. Let's see how it works out. No bear on the snap. Mosley on the hole. Kick is up, and i tell you what, Busby is, misses it. So, 2.24 to go in the first quarter. Wayne County 6, Brookhaven 3. Here's a 30-second break to the station. We'll be back after this word from our sponsors. That drive as Wayne County Busby gets ready to kick it away. Wayne County started the ball on the 24-yard line, and in eight plays, went 76 yards. 
cap by these Brian Jackson 11 yard run Marshall there's a buzzer with a kick and it's going to hit the ground and be go out of bounds at the 20 and uh, some of the success you know reshuffling down there we've had a little trouble covering the kick here the last few weeks and so that may not be the worst thing in the world <laughs> no I was just sitting here thinking the same thing myself at least they didn't get a chance to return it you know Gauthier may just kick it again last week I don't know big side they just take it where it is at the 35 where they get it so first and 10 for the Panthers who find themselves trailing the Panthers are 10 and 1 hey, the on the year and uh, coming in here and Probably hadn't been behind many times this year. No, I don't think so. I tell you, uh, West came down here last week and they lost 26 to nothing. But I tell you, West gave them a really, really good game. And South Jones did the same thing in division play. In fact, that game went to uh, overtime. Oh, my South. goodness. Okay. 2.24 to go in the first quarter. Wayne County leads Brook Haven 63. Brook Haven at the wrong uh, 35. There's a toss to Leggett. And Wayne County's going to get him out of bounds after about a three or four yard game. That was, uh, that was a super, super hold on the higher end. Uh, we may have to take some slack and wash that jersey and some hot water to get it shrunk back down. Forward and not, nor is really on the, uh, on the stop. It's good to see old Periante stepping up. We lost so many, and, 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 and uh, they moved him back from running back at linebacker this week. And I tell you what, Periante knows what to do. He does. He's a good one. It's where he's at home. <laughs> All right, second and six from the 39. Four eight bit. There's Reagan. No, the quarterback's going to keep it up the middle. He's going to get close to a first down. I don't know he'll, if he got he'll, it. He'll have it. I think Marshall, by the time they get him in that spot. I believe he called that one on the money. That's why I call you. Okay, but they're going to mark him. Oh, they marked him short. I thought he had it. I did, too. I thought he had it. 30 inches. The ball's at the... 44 yard line, 45 is a, is, a, is a line to make for a first. Inside two, inside two minutes, we're at a minute 50. Quarterback's going to keep it, going to get his first down. Just barely going to get across the uh, 45 to the 46 yard line of the with 142 to go in the first quarter. Wayne County up 6 to 3. First and 10 for old Brook at the 47 yard line. The world is slugging away with them out there. Old Brooks got two receivers uh, to the right. There's uh, got a man kind of at the ace back on the right side. There's going to be a hand out the leg up the middle, and he's going absolutely nowhere. Wayne County shuts him down at the line of scrimmage. <laughs> and that was bodies. Lee Van Davis is coming off that deep defensive end spot. Kenny, and he hit him with the other one. It was about the time he hit right behind the center. Well, they, they, uh, I tell you what, did a good job. Of, yeah, I would say submarining that, but they torpedoed you, is what they did. <laughs> Second and tenth for Old Brook. They're at uh, 47. We got inside a minute in the first quarter. Wayne County up 6-3. to three. Wayne County's crowd into, into the ball game shouting defense. There goes the quarterback back to throw, turns up field, and going to run it and going to be got a hold back got there, a, Gets in the Warrior territory, we'll bring it for about a third and five, but Kenny's got the hold call, and we'll see how that translates. Kenny, you're right, and Coach Mangum says, take that penalty and back them on up. We're at 35 seconds to go in the first quarter. Wayne County's up six to three. Brookhaven has just backed themselves up in the hole, and that's going to... You know, they did a while ago and picked up 26 yards. Yeah, so they're uh, at 37. Second about 20 to go. 32 seconds to go in the first quarter. Clock is running down inside 25 now. Tell you what, the way they've been running the ball, I wouldn't be surprised to see them throw it this time. Of course, that draw worked really well for them a while ago. And they can throw it. They, they, yes. they throw it very effectively. They got a timeout. Well, I tell you what, we got a timeout. We're going to stay with it right here for a minute or two and uh, give a call out to, uh, you know, we talked about our super fans tonight that are for the game. That's the Millers. But I'd like to give a shout out to all of the super fans who've been with us all year that really helped make these broadcasts possible. Freddie Miller, Ben and Barbara Graves, Jeremy Wright, Lester Mitchell, Carly Beasley, Cassidy Beasley, Gary Jackson, Gary Sigler, Trent Odom, Charlie Britton, and of course Elmer and Tommy Miller who joined the brother Freddie. 
as uh, super fans. You can follow the Warriors uh, all during the week on football on uh, Facebook at, at Warrior Football, and uh, you can listen in tonight, check our scores and pictures there along the way, and follow all during the week. And then, of course, local cable on WCCT Cable Channel 10 Tuesday and Thursday nights at seven, and also at WCWebTV.com uh, on demand. You get all the games of the year, and this one will be up Wednesday night, so you can keep up with the Warriors that way. And we are back for what may be the last play of the of the first quarter here. And here comes your snap and uh, back to throw. There's a toss to a man that's open and he breaks a tackle and he's going to get close to first down yardage with a big play. You call that one, Kenny. Just threw it. The receiver just came out of the, off the line of scrimmage. He was pretty wide open. Yeah, he said, feed me. Got up and spooned his mouth and said, feed me some more. It's going to bring up down, uh, bring up a, into, uh, going to be a third down when we get back a couple of yards as we uh, take a break and go back to the station. We'll be back with a second quarter action after this 30-second break. Well, Kenny, I believe we may be back. Uh, got a 7-6 score from Picky Eden. I'm trying to remember who Picky Eden played. We're going back about that right now. we got a third down and four yard, three yards to go for an old book here out in the... He's going to be the quarterback keeper, and I believe he's going to get the first down as he gets down to about the 41. He will. Uh, he got it, took it off the edge on the, his Uncle Gene would say, the far hand side of the day. First and 10 for uh, the Panthers, and we're at 11.54 to go in the first half. Run County up 6-3. to three. They got the ball on the boy the 40-yard line with the first and 10. <coughs> Maybe it's going to get the Hand up at the middle and run hard, breaking tackles and dragging folks for another first down as he's inside the 30 to about the world of 29 yard line. He ought to be getting tired pretty soon. <laughs> <laughs> they got a horse who might as well run. They got two running backs that average, they carry the ball about the same number of times. They both average 8.8 .8 yards a carry, but I think one of them's injured. We haven't seen him tonight. Leggett's healthy and doing well. There goes the quarterback around the left side, and they're going to tackle him after a short game. He may get to the 25-yard line or so. Both, both defenses tonight playing, playing pretty well, but giving up some big plays. You know, uh, Brooke Hayden is just very methodical. They're not just, you know, they make a big play on his third or second longs, but uh, this time it's just very, you know, five, six, seven yards carry. And they, I guess that's pretty much what they're known for this year. Trips right. Forward the Panthers. We're at five seconds on a 25 second clock. I believe they'll get this one away. They do it one second. There's a leg that's going to come around the right side. He turns the jets on and gets on the corner and breaks a tackle or two and gets hit out of bounds. But there's, uh, it's a good clean hit. It's going to be a first down for the Panthers. He's there uh, in the red zone. I thought I saw a flag go down, but I don't know. I, I, I don't know what it was. It must have been just a piece of equipment. They're at the uh, 16 yard line with the first and 10, 10.35 to go in the first half. Wayne Kelly Carl is up 6 to 3. Old Brook is in the red zone. There's Leggett up the middle with a nice runner in. He could go, Kenny. He does as he reaches for the goal line and they give it to him. Touchdown, Old Brook. They had him, looks like they had him uh, around the four, and he just, he's a tall, lanky kid. He just going down, reached for the end zone, and got in and found pay there. So right now it's nine to six, Old Brook. Old Brook going to try the PAT. Dan Morrow, Leggett. Here they come. Snap. There's a snap. The kick is up, and I tell you what, that looks like this good. So, with 10 28 to go in the half, Wayne County 6, Old Brook 10. Here's a 30 second break to the station. We'll be back after this word from our sponsors. 
Okay, we're back, and uh, Old Boots going to kick it away. We've been kicking this thing inside the five. Our guys are standing at the ten, waiting for it. Aaron turned and roar. And here he comes, and he's going to put a foot in. It's going to be high, 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 and Aaron's going to catch it down here at about the five-yard line, and there's some pretty good coverage coming at him. I don't know if he can get by or not, and he cannot go. They get him inside the ten, Kenny. Got him well, that, I know he's trying to get to the wall, but he'd have, he'd have been better off that time just to come up this side. <laughs> yeah, they, they do. They, he had, he looked like, as soon as this comes down, they have to go all the way across that field to get to the wall. And I mean, with that speed that Brook Haven's got, he just could not, didn't have a chance. He made it back to the middle of the field. He told it about the numbers and about the time he was running, uh, you know, across the field trying to get to the wall like Kenny said and before he could get to the middle of the field they were all over and tackled him. They got him into just outside the 10 which is a little better than I thought. All righty, here goes uh, the freshman running backs in the game now and he's going to get the handoff. No, Jackson's going to keep it, make one miss. Here he goes, Kenny Blinken tackles and gets out across the 20 yard line. I thought he made the nice fake to uh, Sudamian Williamson up the middle and then fake the toss and up the field. He goes and he plants that foot and he's got us in a second and one. The 20, the 21 yard line is, uh, is the yard to make for a first down. Marcy just did a good job to read his blocks and read who was on the line of scrimmage. Up the toss out here to Josh Page makes a catch. He's got a first down, Kenny, as he gets out close to the 25 yard line. Wayne County is pretty methodical in the way they're moving this ball so far tonight, too. Yeah, just a, just a quick out is all it was. Just a quick out pattern and a good throw and catch. And uh, got us enough left first down. All righty, we're at 948 and counting to go in the first half. I'm going to hand off to Williamson up the middle, and he's going to hit a wall, Kenny, and not going to get anything. Uh, he's up the middle of that line of scrimmage. Uh, freshman finds a pretty tough sled in there with 9.33 to go in the first half and counting. They just ain't a lot of room there uh, up in that middle. Those, guys, those big guys from Brookhaven are jamming it up in there. Man. They are huge. They are huge up front. It'll be second and 10 with 9.16 to go. Jerome 25 back to throw is Jackson. They're going to get pressure on him. He's going to make a miss. Here he goes, Kenny. And he's going to get across the 30 out to the 32 or 33. He's going to bring up third down and a couple of yards to go for first down. Well, just a good job to see that everything was covered. He was getting some pressure. He got pressure from the right side over there and pulled it down and took off. Big J.J. Walker has checked in on the third and two right here now. And uh, 8.47 to go in the half. Wayne County trails 10 to 6. They're at their own 33, looking at a third and I'll call it two yards to go. Well, Royals in motion, going to get the speed sweep, and going to go around the right side, and going to be come up short, Kenny, so it's going to up fourth down in a punting situation for the War Eagles. Well, I'll tell you what, we got to wind up losing a the yard there. Uh, we, I like Zavarian Jackson's down there signal, let's go for it, going fourth and three from Royal 32, as well, so we can get this. Uh, well, we probably would have if we <laughs> bounced it to the outside. <laughs> but Josh, we look, Josh was the one running the football and looking at his uh, box. So right, mm he -hmm. just looked to me like he had a chance to get outside when he turned it up field. All righty, Busby's going to be standing inside his own 20 to receive this snap from Abair. So, oh, they, oh my goodness, they tried to short snap it to Quentin Bibbins and he mishandled it. They were gonna they were gonna fake it, Kenny. And uh, yeah. you know, we got a lot of success with that this year. A lot of success, but that one didn't work. And so Brook Haven's gonna get the ball at the twenty five yard line. More of the defense to show off the backs against the wall with seven fifty to go in the half and the Panthers lead ten to six. Quentin just had a little trouble handling that snap. I don't have a problem with that call at all. We're doing about 60% on fourth down conversion on the year. That was a make one. Let's see what the Warrior defense can do. Got the backs against the wall, trailing by 4, 10 to 6, or 7.50 to go in the half. And the quarterback's going to keep it up the middle and have a nice game. And I mean, Tommy Clopton down there just made a huge block. <laughs> oh, there, I think that was a word. He did. He <laughs> put him back on his teeth. Uh, Clopton is the center for a senior center and, a, and a, the coach's son and a, a Southern Miss commit. All right, second and about six to go from the 21. 
Logan's, no, quarterback's going to keep it. Jeremy Sibley's going to make first contact with him and get some help from uh, Jeremy Reed. So they're going to stop him. You know, uh, didn't matter who had the ball then. We had a uh, we made a good play defensively on both the quarterback and the uh, and the running back. It's going to be third and six from the 21. Four old Brook. I think you're going to see a slant in here, a post pattern. That receiver they got out there is a big receiver. He looks like he's about 6'4 and about 200. There's some pressure on the blitz. There's a pass out there over the head to the left side. So it's going to bring up fourth down, Kenny. Fourth and six from the 21. If Wayne County can get out of this thing without giving up, a, giving up any points, they're going to be very fortunate. So Brian Jackson, Jackson is checking in on defense. And it uh, looks like uh, they're going to try for a field goal out right here. And this field goal going to be a 38-yarder. Uh, 38 38 and this kid's got plenty of leg. We've seen him, you know, kicking. He can, he's got plenty of leg there because of the snap. The kick has got plenty of distance, Kenny. And I don't know. It looks like it's no good. So Wayne County really dodged a bullet right there on the fumble, uh, on the show, on the failed uh, fourth down conversion attempt. And the defense raised up and did what they had to do. You know, uh, I was pretty impressed with that defensive stand. Well, it was. They did, did a defense did a good job to step up and uh, – I tell you what, nothing ventured, nothing gained. I think it's a little more out cliche. And we can say that since we held them on That's four exactly down. right. Exactly right. 640 to go in the half. Wayne County trails 10 to 6, but they have held uh, Old Brook and have got the ball on the 20 yard line with the first and 10. And freshman running back, should Damien Williamson, checks into the contest. We've got a timeout. We'll see what's going on. Not sure it's uh it's an official timeout. It's not called for anybody in particular, I don't think. Well, they got their ducks lined back up and putting this thing in play. We got trips left. Forwards of Brian Jackson, single man on the right side, freshman running backs in the backfield with him, and they're gonna hand it up to Williams. And there he goes up the middle, breaking tackles and running hard, dragging folks out across the 35-yard line. The big freshman on about a 15-yard clip on first down. I would classify that as a jaunt. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't a sachet, I guarantee you that. <laughs> All righty, first and ten for the War Eagles. Big freshman running back, and he's going to get the ball again and try to get on the corner. He turns up field for a couple of yards. As he gets a, maybe out to the 37 or so. They ought to give him the 38 just on principles. <laughs> <laughs> 608 in County. Wayne County trails 10 to 6. Page is in motion, hand the ball off to the freshman up the middle, and uh, he fights his way out to the 40, maybe just over the 40. It wasn't a real smooth exchange. It looked like uh, Jackson held on to that thing, and uh, that wasn't, excuse me, that wasn't Jay, that wasn't uh, Shadami, that was J.J. Walker checked in, big number 40 on the, got us in the third down at about five yards to go. That goes to be the handoff of the middle W.C. Washington, and he's going to find pretty tough strut. He's going to get a couple. He's going to bring up fourth down and a couple of yards to go. I wonder if we're going to try this. Uh, I wouldn't think it's two in a row, but i tell you what, Coach Magum is, Magum is uh, balls out around the 48-yard line. They're leaving the team in. Jackson says, let's go get it. 43-yard line. Lane County's going to try for the conversion here on fourth down, Kenny, with 509 in County. Lane County's believing in this defense, and Coach Magum's going to call timeout. So I'll tell you what, let's do with 503 to go in the half. Lane County down 10 to 6, trying for uh, looking at a fourth and three. Here's a 30-second break to WABO. We'll be back after this word from our sponsor. I'm not sure if we're back on the air or not, but we're going to call it like we are, fourth and two. And J.J. Walker, the big running back for Wayne County, is in the ball game right now. And uh, Wayne County's trying for it. This they're on 43 yard lines. And Brian Jackson is going to keep it. He's going to try to get it in the corner. He does. Oh, he goes. Oh. He got a great block down the sideline. He's at the 30. Got it, man. At the 21 yard line. Who made that block, Kenny? Holy smoke, that was number seven. <laughs> Demetrius Harris Jr. on the block that sets Brian Jackson free and down the sideline he goes. And uh, inside the red zone, K Dog. 
I mean, you down around, <laughs> down around the 15. Talk about laying on line, fourth and, and two in your own territory, trailing in the first half, 10 to six. And, Man, Javon's been saying, let's go, let's go. And I tell you what, Coach Mangum gave him the chance, and here come the Warriors in the red zone, the first and ten. J.J. Walker is your running back. 38-yard run. All righty, 4.54 to go. Running kind of trails, 10 to 6. Page is in motion. I'm going to hand the ball up the middle of the big man, and he cannot go anywhere. Those two big defensive tackles, can they just, when they stopped him, they stopped the load. But those guys, like I said, that's 300 pounders everywhere in the middle of the defensive line. I'm telling you, where you look. <laughs> they have to haul them on a separate bus <laughs> and get a permit for overweight load. You know, Jay, uh, Geronte Walker, he's a 220 pounder, and I mean, he looks like uh, they can put him in, they can put him in his in the pocket. <laughs> <laughs> Second so he lost a yard. Second 11, Jackson keeps it. He's going to break a tackle or two and maybe gain a yard or so. Gets down to about the 18. They had that loss, Kenny, and got him outside the chains, and they might have got back to the chains. It's third down and about a 10 to go with 409 and counting. Oh, nah, yeah, I guess so. Before he give him much of a spot. All righty, we're inside four minutes. More Eagles trail 10-6. They're in the red zone with a third and 10. Jackson's moving to his left. His throw all the way, and he's going to get his first down. Can he he'll could go. go. Touchdown to oh. Brian Jackson. Oh, 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 Let me tell you, those blocks on the corners, folks, by those wide receivers are just outstanding. They're getting their, getting their hands inside, getting maintaining contact, and just up. That's what broke him with those blocks. Man, you called that on the big one he had earlier with Demetrius Harris make the block, and they're, they're doing it. And, uh... I'll tell you what, one guy's up 12 to 10, trying for a PAT to make it a three-point ball game right here. A bear on the snap, Moses gonna hold it, Moses gonna kick it. Let's see, there's the snap, the kick is up, and it looks like it's going to be good. So with 335 to go in the half, Wayne County 13, Brookhaven 10. Here's a 30-second break back to WABO. We'll be back after this word from our sponsors. All righty. We're back in Wayne County with 345 to go in the half. Takes the lead, 13 to 10. And Bozeman's going to kick it off, and he's going to squib one, go down the middle of the field, hits it to 15, reeled in at the 10, and here come the uh, return folks, and they're going to tackle him inside the 30. He may fall out to the 30-yard line, Kenny. Well, just a, a good job of coverage. Of course, you look at it and give you 30. <laughs> Might all kicked it out of bounds. <laughs> just get up that extra five yards. It's spooky. It's spooky. Let me save that other extra two years on my lifespan. I think Picky Union's up all all, seven to six after one quarter of plays. We're getting a report from our friends down in Picky Union, Kerry Messer and his broadcast crew. All righty, 3.37 to go in the half. Wayne County's up. Here comes Old Brook with the first and 10. to toss to the left side. Up the field they go. Kenny with a pretty nice run. That's Leggett's going to get out close to the 40. Going to be short of the first down by a yard or so. Maybe they'll run short of oxygen to get it over there. <laughs> <laughs> He'll be gasping for breath. Nine yards. All right. We're at 317, second one to go from their own 39. Old Brooks got the ball. Trey to Wayne County, 13 to 10. Old Brook comes in at 10 to 1 on the season. On the loss to 6 A and undefeated Jet Pearl. There's a pass across the middle. The big receiver, number 10, makes the catch, and they're going to get down to the Royal 40. You've been looking for him to catch that ball, Kenny. He finally yeah. got him on. Uh, we, the way we're splitting our safeties is just leaving the middle of the field open. And uh, he's, uh, he normally like... I got him listed at 6'3", and uh, he's over a bit of that, and I guarantee he weighs 220. He's a big kid. Kenny had to call on that one. He knew it was coming just a matter of when. We're at 242 to go and counting in the half. Wayne County up by three. First and 10th row. Look at the war eagle. Uh, 40 and Wayne County. That set pass down. It's incomplete, Kenny. Good job. Ron. You okay over there, buddy? I don't know. <laughs> you need a cough drop? I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> Second and 10 from the Warrior 40. For Old Brook, 234 in the half. Warrior is up by three, 13 to 10. On that long pass play, we were lined up and uh, coming through to both sides of the field. 
they had trips to this side, so we had to spread our safeties. Quarterback's going to keep him the tackle and get on the left side. And I tell you, he got a first down, I do believe. Kenny, we'll see where they spot him. He's going to be inside the 30, down to around the 26 yeah. yard line or so. He got two first downs. 226 to go. In the half, Old Brook trails Wayne County, 13 to 10, but they're on the move as they've got the ball on the 26 with a first set of downs, first and 10. And here come the Panthers. Back to throw. There's a bullet shot across the middle, low and incomplete, and Jeremy Sidney bears the quarterback in the backfield. It is a good clean hit. Stops the clock at 2.21. In the half, second and 10 from the 26 from Wayne County 13. The Panthers of Brookhaven 10. Really need to hold them to a field goal attempt here. Oh, yeah, they get the ball to start the second half. Not a ball left to be played. Especially uh, Wayne County gets it to move and rip it off big plays at 2.21 to go. All right. I'm going to do the handoff at the middle of the leg. He's demanding what a run he's got going on down there. He's still going. He might make it. They're going to get him short. But it's not going to miss it by much. He's going to get down there to about the one yard line. He's inside the one, Kenny. I mean, he just looked like he was just slicing butter right there. I mean, that big kid was letting it rip. Christian Wiley, number 81, checks in. Jeremy Reed checks out. Big sophomore linebacker. He's in the 225 or 30-pound range. I tell you what, I don't know what Coach Copper's got, but I'm looking at number one. They got the ball spotted on the three with a first and goal. And I'm looking at number one, and you're right, Kenny. He gets the call, and I tell you, he's got a flag. Is that a flag that came down down there? Oh, that was somebody that threw something, a football, I think. I believe he got a touchdown. So with 2.07 to go in the half, Old Brook and uh, Mr. Leggett get themselves a touchdown and they'll be trying to P.O.T. Wayne Pass going to get the ball back with two minutes or better. Here comes the uh, snap. And uh, it's a mighty big kick right there. So, with 207 going to half, Brook Haven 17, Wayne County 13. Here's a 30 second break to the station. We'll be back at this word from our sponsor. All right, I think we're back. Here's a report. Uh, Hasburg's up 21 to nothing in the first quarter. Picky Union's up 14 to 13 with three minutes left in the half overall down at Pickering, so there's some pretty good games going around tonight, Kenny. Well, there sure are. We got some good one right here right now. Well, this is this is the time of year in the playoffs when you start to see some of the best football played, especially when you get those upper seed matchups. There's going to be a high kick that uh, Roy is going to take it to five, and let's see, he's going to, he's had a little more vertical here. He's going to make one of the, here he goes, Kenny, he's out across the 30, he's out to the 40 yard line, breaking tackle, still going. And I tell you what, he did a great job. He just went back up and right into the belly of that, that uh, wedge and, uh, man, just piled over his way from the 40 out to midfield. Uh, we've, got, we've got an injured uh, player on the field. It's an injured uh, Panther. We're going to stay with it. Here's another score uh, reported. West Jones is up 7 to nothing at the half. And I'm trying to remember who they're playing. Uh, let's see. West finished second. So they're playing our number three seed, which is Stone, Stone County. Stone County. Yeah. All righty. Well, they marked him at 49. I'll tell you what, that was a great run. All righty. It don't matter one yard. Don't, <laughs> don't take away from that. All righty. We're at 154 to go in the half. Wayne carries it. They're on 49 with a first and 10. There's going to be a hand off the page. He's looking to throw it. He's going to fire one downfield. There's a man that's open. He makes the catch. It's going to be a touchdown. Wayne County, Joshua Page on the in the round pass to Gary's Royal. And Wayne County is taking the lead again. Are you in front yet, Kato? 51 yards, there, buddy. <laughs> Joshua Page played a lot of quarterback. And I mean, you know, uh, he nailed, he, he hit Gary's Royal in stride running behind everybody. And it was a touchdown all the way. 
Christmas is fun, ladies and gentlemen. And we got a great crowd here from Wayne County tonight. I mean a big crowd. And they're having a good time. Here comes the PAT. High snap. Gets down. Gets a kick up. And it's going to be no good. So, with 145 going to half, Wayne County 19. Brookhaven 17. We're going to stay with the action here. Kenny, let's talk a little bit about that drive. You're doing so much figuring over there. I'm proud of you. You sure can write and do some, a lot of fancy things. I've been studying under the great Paul King. <laughs> <laughs> However, let me say that I am not, I'm just doing this for the apprentice. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. What a yeah. fun half of yards on the pass play from uh, Joshua Page and uh, to uh, Darius Wargo. I'll tell you what, it was a beautiful, beautiful play. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, Coach Mangum and Kent Gandy, they pulling out all the stops tonight, aren't they? There's a hole in the bottom of the map there right now. <laughs> All right, and Burgess is going to kick one deep, and it's going to be fielded at the 15-yard line. Here comes Old Book, and there he goes, Kenny. He's going to take it to the house unless Eric can get him. Eric is going to drag him down to the 40-yard line, and they it's a good thing they got a track around this field because right now this thing's kind of looking like a track meet out there. Oh, it sure is. Mm. That's why we need to kick it out of bounds. <laughs> Oh, it only took 10 seconds off the clock. All right, so look for Coach Clopton to do the same thing here, Marshall. Yeah. I want to watch your transmitter down there. He ought to be all right. Well, I've been trying to watch him. Yeah, he'll be all right. All righty, first and 10 for Old Book. They're at the 38-yard line of Wayne County. All righty. He goes Reagan up the middle, and uh, he just breaks the tackle. Kenny and down the sideline, he goes again, and he could go. I tell you what, they're gonna. I think they got him out of bounds. It looks like uh, Royal might have got him out of bounds. Reagan thought he got in, but that was very much like the last thing, last play we saw him run down there when he did get in. Yeah, and they've only taken 20 seconds off the clock, including the kick here. The ball's gonna be somewhere around. Uh, with the nine-yard nine line. line. Clock, the board's got it on the eight. First and goal, 125 in the half. There's a stoppage of play. Timeout, Wayne County. 125 in the half. Wayne County's up 19 to 17. We missed a couple of extra points. Uh, Old Brooks got a first and goal. Again, Wayne County 19, Old Brooks 17. Old Brooks threatening to take the lead right here to close this half out. But they hadn't done it yet. All righty, Wayne County took that time out to gather their composure there. There's a quarterback fake to the leg. He's going to keep it and going to run hard down to inside the five-yard line. Going to get him down to about the four, maybe. Yeah, he got a good spot. Yeah, they put him on the three. One pin and counting, second and goal from the three-yard line. There goes the big man Leggett for the touchdown up the middle. So, inside a minute now, and Old Brooks going to take the lead again. Wayne County, I got to say, uh, <clears throat> slugging it away to the top. See, I don't know what Brookhaven finished. I think they finished a year. Might have ranked in the Super 10. I'm not quite sure. We got some fussing going on over there. Some booing. Not a penalty flag, they say. Penalty flag, they say. Well, imagine that. They're having a discussion on the the crowd. Far side folks was booing. We'll wait to see what the officials come up with. The crowd, the fans are not happy. The Brookhaven fans are booing up a storm over there, and Wayne County's defense is clapping their hands. So those points may come off the board, but keep in mind, well, I don't know that the, the PA guy was seeing a misinterpretation by the officials. I'm not sure. The ball is spotted back here at the. Unsportsmanlike conduct against the Panthers. Now, will that take points off the board? No. no. Okay. All right, there you go. No, no, it, 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 <laughs> well, you know, the public, the public address announcer has just said he doesn't agree with the call the officials made. Is that, can you do that? 
Yeah, that's pretty. And you can wind up getting a penalty in the reprimand. All right, there's the kick. Uh, and that makes it 24 to 19. We're going to stay with it. So will they assess this on the kickoff, Kenny? Yes. They'll kick from the 25. And keep in mind that there's 58 seconds left to go. Old Brooks is going to be kicking off from, uh, well, I'm not quite sure. The fans are still booing and the public announcer, the public address announcer is encouraging them, encouraging them to do so. They'll be kicking off from the 25. Joshua Page and Arrington are back to receive the kick. Wayne County trails 24 to 19 with 58 seconds to go in the half. I've never heard a public address announcer do that in my in all my days. In all the years I've done this 25 years, I've never heard anything like that. There's a kick that's going to go out of bounds. It, it doesn't go out of bounds, and Wayne County has to cover it down there inside the 20. So. Uh, he says it's a beautiful kick, but it didn't look very beautiful to me. He really got money to look at. <laughs> I'm not sure he's not on TV because he's uh, he's very, very descriptive. Unbelievably, the ball died at the 18-yard line. Unbelievably, he says, it died at the 18-yard line. It's hard not to get mad sometimes, and I'm trying to be mad. <laughs> Well, that's a reference to the player that they lost last year. Uh, he wore number 18. Oh, okay, okay. I can, I can accept that. So that was his spirit helping them. Ah, uh, got you. That makes sense. Game. Jackson's going to try to run the ball. He's going to turn it up here. Follow the ball. And uh, Wayne County's going to get on it. And here they go. The freshman is trailing the play. And he picked up the fumble, and Zerion Jackson is holding his hand. He's hurt. But anyway, Shadanian scoops it up and gets out across the 30. <laughs> Going to be a first down for the Warriors. First and 10 for Wayne County. Jackson's moving to his right. He's going to fire one out there. It's going to be caught by Darius Royal for a first down out across the 40 with 39 seconds to go in the half. He crossed the 40 with it, so it uh, just depends on the spot. Looks like about. Why don't I just carry my mic over there and let that guy do it? <laughs> I tell you what, he and I are getting a fight. I tell you right all right, first and ten for Wayne County at the on 42, 39 seconds to go. Jackson's back to throw. He's going to fire one down here to Joshua Page in double coverage at the 35-yard line, and it's incomplete. All righty. Thirty-two seconds to go in the half. Wayne County trails 24 to 19. Old Brook will get the ball to start the second half. Wayne County's on it's second and ten from their own 42. Jackson's moving to his left. He's looking to throw. He's going to have to be tackled for a loss. He took a big hit there right in the face. They're inside 20 seconds to go in the half. He's going to bring up third down. I don't know why Old Brook wouldn't take time out. Wayne County calls time out. Okay, 11 seconds to go. Wayne County's looking at a third and 17 at their own 37, and they call time out and stop the clock. But they can run two plays and run the clock out, so we're just going to stay here with it. Key, this has been an extremely exciting first half of football. I, I, I tell you what, I, I've been excited all day. I said it before the game, I was, and I, I'm still excited. Yes, you are. We're going to get you some hot chocolate or something, settle you down, put a marshmallow in it. That, uh, that public address is now, you got me off. <laughs> that, that a little burn on you, say. Yeah. All right. Not well, like I did against Hattiesburg, I guess. <laughs> the world is a player like they got one on us out, too. I'm proud of these kids and these coaches, man. They're laying it all on the line. Nobody gave them a chance. But I tell you what, they're out here playing football. There's a toss to Roy, and here he goes. And he's breaking tackles and gets out across the midfield. He gets hit out of bounds, and there's a 15-yarder going to be tacked onto that. 
So we got five seconds left to go. Wayne County. Hang on, let's see what the PA guy says. <laughs> you like that one? You like <laughs> All right, 24 to 19. Oh, well, let's see here. They threw the ball out they're there. Gonna, they, I think one of them will be a whole... Uh, how many flags they got? I don't know, but if, if they if they called us for a hold, then that, that uh, the penalty shouldn't offset because it would be a personal foul. Personal foul. And that's the call. It's been a dead ball foul. It's first and 10 at the 37-yard uh, line of Brookhaven. Five seconds left to go in the half. And with all the stuff we've seen here in the play, I ain't going to tell them what we're allowed to see right here. Probably see it handed off right out the middle. All righty. Jackson's looking to throw down field. He pulls up and fires him. with the buzzer down to the end zone, and it's incomplete. So... That brings the first half to a close with the score of Wayne County 19, Old Brook 24. We're going to take a break and then be back with the WC Web TV halftime show and our guests Kim Mangum and Shamika Gandhi, our charity sponsors, after this word from our sponsors. See you after the break. Back, everybody. And uh, we're fixing to start this second half of the first round playoff action. And what a first half it was. We're going to start the second half, not the first half. But, uh, it's the first. Oh, let me get you. I got my, my buddy turned off over there. How about that? Right, Talk to me, Kenny. It's the first half of the second half. First half of the second half. The Wayne County's going to be kicking this thing off. Old Brook has got a 24-19 lead. The 10-1 uh, Panthers have a 24-19 lead over Wayne County. And Wayne County's going to kick it off and see if we can play a little defense. Pretty nice kick. Going to be wheeled in down there at the 10-yard line. And here comes a mighty speedy return, man. And he puts his head down and makes his way out to about the 30. And there's a flag on the play, Kill. Yeah, blocking the back. <laughs> You just got like a sixth sense about these penalties. You just, how do you do that? <laughs> oh, mercy. I don't know. <laughs> well, let's see if it was. A lot of times it's something that I see. <laughs> All right, this is, man, get on the money. K Money. Kidney. I mean, you got as many names as King does. You can do everything. Well, actually, it turned out it was a hole. Uh, there was a block in the back right there in that same spot. So uh, I had a 50-50 chance of being right. First and 10 for the own 21 for Old Brook as they start this second half off with leading Wayne County by 24 to 19. What a great effort by the coaching staff and the players of Wayne County High School Royal Eagle that first half. Couldn't be more proud of these kids and these coaches. What an effort. All righty, there's going to be a handoff, and boy, he's going to be nailed at the line of scrimmage. They gave it the leg at Sibley's back there, and the linebacker looks like uh, Jeremy Reed back there, but it's caved him in at the line of scrimmage, wings up second and 10. I'll tell you what, uh, Leggett had a lot of yards in that first half. He sure did. I sure hope he's tired. I hope he is, too. All right, I'm sure we're going to see plenty more of him. He's going to get chances anyway. Oh, there's your big receiver in the wing back over here on the right side. And here come the Panthers back to throw. And there's a top pass that's incomplete and almost intercepted. We had a defender, number 21, uh, had a shot at that thing for Wayne County. That would be Stephon Ford with a good shot at it. But brings up third and 10 for the Panthers. With 11-13 to go in the third, the F.I. Wayne County, 24-19. Uh, need a big stop right here. How great would it be to get them three and out here to start this second half? I can tell you how great it would be. He's super, super great. Well, yeah, num number one is fixing to get the football, I think. Quarterback's moving to his left, and he's going to turn it upfield. And I tell you what, they're going to get him out of bounds, Kenny, and he's not going to get it. That's going to force Old Brook into a punting situation right there. Man, I'll give it number one. That uh, rascal has been been money all night. <laughs> going to bring up fourth down and about eight yards to go. So they get the ball out to uh, their own 23-yard line. So it'll be fourth and seven. 
Brian Jackson is going to be back here to receive this punt. Kenny, he's standing at the 45. It's on 45. So, Wayne County, we, this is the first time we've seen this guy punt for Bill Cave tonight, so we don't know what's coming. I imagine it'll be pretty good. There's a good snap. And a low punt. It's going to hit the ground, and Jackson's going to fumble it and get back on it out there. He's really trying to make something happen, but he scooped it up and going to have the ball out there around the 47-yard line, first and 10 for Wayne County with great field position to start this second half. They held on three and out on Old Brook, and they got it back at the 46-yard line, so Wayne County's going to have it at the wrong 46, trading 24-19, but they've got the football, Kenny, in great field position. Yeah, it's been... Uh, been our best field position, really starting position all night. W.C. Washington checks in and is going to be running back. Two receivers both ways. Forwards of Brian Jackson. Our offensive line's done a good job tonight. Give a shout out to them. There's a handoff. No, it's a fake. The toss out there to Joshua Page. Got a little room, Kenny. He's going to get inside the 50. He's going to be putting his head down and fight real hard down to about the 46 or 45 yard line for a big gain on first down inside of uh, Panther territory. Well, running that, you know, running that option, and uh, there was nobody out here to take the pitch guy and able to kind of get his motor cranked and, and get going to it. Second and two from the 46 of Old Brook, Wayne County. Uh, trails 24 to 19 here and start the third quarter. Trips right, W.C. Washington stays in the backfield. Darius Royal split to the left all down here by himself. Warriors on the left, hash mark, moving right to left to start this first possession of that third quarter. And there's a penalty flag. Unless it's somebody lined up in the neutral zone, I didn't see any of our kids move. What they got, Kenny? It's going to cost us five. Offside, okay. We lined up in the neutral zone over there. I think it was uh, Royal number two. Takes us back across midfield with 49. So we'll be, let's say, we'll be looking at a second and seven to go. Same formation. Back to throw. There's a toss out there to W.C. Washington, and they're going to tackle him as he immediately as he catches it. He, he came in motion and set up shot down there, and they threw it to him out on the side, and the book over and covered it very quickly. It's going to bring up third down and about seven. Wayne Cash got the ball at the wrong 49-yard line. I'm going to give him a yard and call it midfield. I'll go along with that. Third down for the War Eagles. They held Old Book to a three and out on that first possession. Old Book's trying to turn the favor. Jackson's going to keep it. Turns inside. Kenny makes a couple of minutes and spins. He's got the first down inside the 40-yard line. There's no way he should have made that. No, sir. Not at all. And he, I'll tell you what, he did a good job. <laughs> good job just to keep spinning and running and turning and hitting downfield and got it. Inside the 40, I think. 39-yard line it is. First and 10 for Wayne County. Inside the old, inside the old book 40 with trailing 24-19. Wayne County is up with another set of downs, and W.C. Washington stays in the backfield as a Brian Jackson. Harris is in motion. That goes the handoff to W.C. Washington. He's going to get it inside the 25-yard line for another first down. What a big hole by that offensive Ooh, line. Man, it was great. Now, now, this guy, I don't know how cross-eyed he is. I know he's not going to mark his knee down at the 23, but he is. And his knee did not hit at the 23. First and 10 for the Warriors with nine minutes to go in the third. Oh, they're down 24 to 19, but they're knocking on the door of the red zone. There's a speed sweep to Harris. He's going to, no, Jackson's going to keep it. He pulls it. He's going to get, oh, what a tackle. Tackle. Oh, what an open field tackle. I thought he handed it to Harris, but Jackson took it. And like Kenny said, a great play by the defender. It's going to get him back to the 25. It's going to bring up second down and, I don't know, 12 yards to go, it looks like. Boy, that free safety came up and did a job, man. Coach, he did a job. Coach Mangum told us in the pregame show for the WC Web TV pregame show how fast he was and how aggressive he was, and we saw it right there. All righty. Jackson's going to hand the ball to W.C. Washington. He's going to get tackled behind the line of scrimmage. So the old group defense has really stepped up here. Big defensive play. So the defense has been ordered here on his first two possessions. Wayne County is looking at the third and 14 from the 27-yard line of the Panthers. With inside eight minutes in the third, Wayne County trails 24-19. Kenny got a little magic here on this third and long. Let's see. Trips left. W.C. Washington stays in it running back. 
Well, we're out of field goal range, so we're, we're in full down territory. You can rest sure to that. <laughs> yeah. I won't have to get it all this time. Jackson's looking to throw. He turns up field, Kenny. He's got some room. He makes got a block. Back. He makes oh, it. Got a block. Go. Go. safety. And there is a touchdown for Zavine Jackson. And you talk about those uh, those, those uh, receivers doing their job blocking. Tell you what, the block on that safety was a thing of beauty. He just ran up and just got in front and just bumped him. That's all he had to do was buy and cut behind it and took it to the house. So Lane County's missed a couple of extra points tonight, so it's going to line up and go for two. Right now it's 24 to 25, a one-point lead. So we're at 7.34 in the third. Wayne County's got the lead, a one-point lead, 25 to 24, trying to get a two-point conversion. That's going to be a shot. The Jackson's going to throw a pass down here and lob it up high. It's going to be incomplete. I don't... Incomplete. So failure on the point after there's a lot that went on that. I didn't know if the ball came out of Jackson's hands and they in uh, on a fake and they called it an incomplete pass or, or what, but he picked it up and threw it again. But anyway, we got a one point ball game. We're gonna stay with the action right here. Wayne County is up twenty-five to twenty-four with seven thirty-four to go in the third. So uh, can you tell us about that drive, Kenny? I can't hear you. Just a second. You, you stopped me when you're talking about all this stuff. Don't interrupt me when the man's working. <laughs> <laughs> Seven plays and 60 yards. Wow. And a big one, big play was on that third down and 12 out there when Zabrian took it to the house. kids go out and try to play and leave the dust to work here, would you? All righty. Those of us on to kick it away again. These return men from Brookhaven are scaring me to death. There's going to be one that's going to be... Fair caught down inside the 30, Kenny. So that's going to be a pretty sweet deal right there. It'll be somewhere around the 27, 28 yard line. We'll see where they spot it. 7:32 to go in the third quarter. Wayne County with a one-point lead. Boy, big series here. We need to we need to keep them from uh, getting too far downfield and get them to have to turn that ball over on either punt or whatever. Now they're inside their 30 yard line. It looks like they're at about the 20. 29 yard run, their own 29 yard line on the fair catch with the kickoff. First and 10 for Old Brook. Wayne County's got the lead. Quentin Bivens moving people around that defensive front. Four man front. There's a high snap. The quarterback's got it going around the left side, and they're going to get him out of bounds for a short game. Let's see. He might have got across the 30. We'll see what they give him. I don't know if he did. Maybe got back to the line of scrimmage. That's what we'll say, be second and 10. 713 counting up there, Wayne County up 25 to 24. We've had some good football games over here, Kenny, in the past, and we've got a good one going on right now. It does not disappoint when you come over here. Of course, a heavy favorite, I guess you'd have to say, a 10 and 1 team against a team that was 1 over 500. Wayne County was 1 over 500. Brookhaven was 10 and 1 on the year, but Wayne County's giving them all they want right down. There's a handoff to number one, Leggett, and Wayne County's going to tackle him at the line of scrimmage. It may give him a yard. Going to bring up third down and around nine. Just the whole defensive front up there for Wayne County just. Got him a yard, so he still he still nosed up to the 30. So it's going to be third down and nine yards to go with 6:25 to go in the third. Can it be another three and out that the Wayne County defense imposes on Brookhaven? We're going to find out with a snap of this football right here. Wayne County's got a great crowd of fans over here tonight, and they're cheering their Warriors fans on. The children cheering the Warriors on. Back to throw. There's some pressure. Lee Van Davis is going to get after him in second, but he throws the ball at the last minute. I don't know if that was, he was in the. In he the he, he so, threw it to feet of number one yeah. leg it. So uh, Lee Van Davis came off with a defensive end position and then got all kind of pressure on him. And Old Bush going to have to punt it again. That's two, three and outs. The Warriors defense has imposed on the Brookhaven offense to start this second half. Brian Jackson's going to be standing back here around his own 40-yard line to receive this punt. The last one was very low and not very far. All right. The Warriors fans, are, the Warriors are feeling it, Kenny, right now. And the Warriors fans are responding up here in the stands. And a good crowd of fans. There's a good snap. There's going to be a high, high spiral that Jackson's going to have to go back and get. And Jackson's going to get it. And... 
make one or two miss, Kenny, and here he comes up the field down the sidelines. He's going to get out across the 35. So, again, not bad field position for Wayne County. They'll be, uh, they'll be across their 35. They'll be almost to the 40-yard line there at the 30. That was about a 42-yard turn. It was one of those pretty spirals that turns over. And uh, they're going to spot that ball at the, at the 39, no, 37-yard line, 38. 5.49 to go in the third. That's sort of like uh, artillery. You just hit on either side, <laughs> finally drop it in the middle. <laughs> That's exactly right. Wayne County's got the lead and the football with 5.49 to go in the third quarter. It's a one-point game. J.J. Walker checks in, running back, big number 40, the sophomore. There goes Joshua Page in motion, handed to the big man. And uh, I'll tell you what, that's power on power right there. And there's some big houses in the middle of that defensive line. We've talked about them over and over. And that's pretty tough sled. And J.J. gets a yard out of it. 5.31 and counting. Wayne County up 25 to 24. And that's 5.31 in the third quarter. Wayne County's forced 2, 3 and out. They're going to be the another. No, that's a toss out here to Page. Oh! Oh my goodness, and he gets on the ground, and it looks like Old Brook has got it. He did a little, tried to do a lateral right there to uh, Demetrius Harris. Let's see, it's either Harris or Laurel, I can't tell. Seven, it was Harris, and he fumbled the snap, uh, fumbled the toss, and it rolls out across the 45, and that's the first turnover of the night for Wayne County, and that puts Old Brook in business at the 46-yard line of Wayne County. Well, your defense has to step up now, but it, look, it was uh, it just uh, the toss was a little ahead of him. Uh, Zabrian had to make it, uh, had to make it in a hurry, and uh, he just couldn't get his hands on the ball. Get it was ahead of him. Went down and it it. I mean, the reason it wound up out there was he uh, he kicked it. I was just thinking it was uh, if it was forward, it wouldn't be a forward pass, but I guess not. Brookhaven's ball, nonetheless. There goes the quarterback's going to keep it. He's going to get out here on the edge and break a tackle or two. And now he's going to get dragged out of bounds around the 36-yard line. He's asking for a horse collar. I'll tell you what, I couldn't argue with that too much. <laughs> well, they had his jersey, but they didn't have him inside the pass. There you go. All right, second and one for Old Brook. 5 6 to go in the third. Well, it's 37 of Wayne County, 36 of yard line to make. For a first down for the Panthers. It'll be the first one they've made in the second half if they get it. They're in a good position to get it. There's a handoff to number one, and he can't find anywhere to go, but breaks tackles, Kenny, and makes somewhere to go, and he's going to get dragged down from behind, and I believe he's going to get the first down. But now Wayne County was all over him in the backfield, but he broke some tackles and got that first down. He did. He picked. He needed a yard and picked up about three. That's Leggett. Perriante Norsworth is uh, checking out. He's uh, kind of hobbling a little bit. And I know he would rather be in that football game. The Wayne County needs him out there right now, but he's on the sideline. First and ten for Old Brook. There's a toss to Leggett, and he's going to run hard, do himself a spin or two, make one miss, and get a nice game here on first down. See what they ultimately how many he get. He's going to wind up with six or seven on that carry. Got official timeout. Looks like we got an injured war eagle on the field over there. So uh, we're going to take a 30 second break to the station and we'll be back after this word from our sponsors. 30 seconds. <laughs> Stefan Ford was injured, but he's able to make it off on his own power, so that's a good sign. Thankful for that. Perriante Norsworth is still sitting on the sideline over here. He's had to come out with a, looks like he was hobbling up a little bit. All right, second down and three to go from the Royal 25. The Panthers have it trailing by one. There's a pass across the middle. It's going to be caught. That's going to be a touchdown for the Panthers of Old Brook. <laughs> that is uh, number 12 on the reception. John Hilbert, he's got 27 catches on the year. That's his ninth touchdown on the year. 16.7 yards per carry average, and that adds to his average because he was on about the 25-yard line. So a 25-yard touchdown, and Brooke Haven takes the lead again. 30 to 25, and they're going to try to make it a six-point ball game here with this PAT. Brooke Haven took advantage of the turnover, Kenny, and... Uh, 
Wayne County had a chance to expand their lead and couldn't do it. Okay, there's the PAT, and it's good. So with 4.20 to go in the third, Brookhaven 30, Wayne County 25. Here's a 30-second break to the station. We'll be back after this word from our sponsor. All right, it will just come back, and uh, Wayne Carey turned the ball over with a one-point lead, and Noel Brook was able to take the take the ball and drive it down and score and go up 31 to 25. So, six-point ball game with 4:20 to go in the third. 10 and one Brookhaven with a six-point lead. There's a high, high kickoff that Andrew's going to take down there inside the five. He's looking for somewhere to go, and up the field he comes to me, and I tell you what, he turns up field and going to get tackled out around the 26-yard line. I tell you what, he can really run fast. He sure can. Okay. Wayne County needs to, as Kenny always says, and quoting the Reverend Jackie Sh <laughs> Score with the score. Answer the score with the score. That's what a good team does, like they don't. The right river shells. Always right. All right. All righty. Washington. Any running back. To a zoo on four plays to 46 yards to make us pay for that turnover. Yeah, and pay for it, we did. Now let's see if we can respond. There's going to be a handoff. No, a toss out there to Joshua Page. He's on the right side, puts his head down, and well defended, Kenny. Let's see what he was able to get out of. He did have a gain out of it, maybe a couple of yards. We'll see. Maybe one yard. Second and nine. Get it out to the page on the toss. He comes in motion and falls in there behind the quarterback for the pitch. And uh, they've been running that a pretty good bit. Second and nine from their own 29. Or he goes trail with 32. 24 to go. Jackson's looking to make a pass. It's going to be just out of hands of uh, Demetrius Harris Jr. He's going to be at third down and nine with 3.33 to go in the third period. Panthers 31, War Eagles 25. War Eagles looking at a third and nine from their own 29. We've had some big third down conversions tonight. This is going to need to be one of them. Old, old Mo swapped horses now and, and riding on the uh, riding on the side of the Panthers for that turnover. Go back and hit. Boy, that sure that sure hurt. That that hurt us worse than the uh, failed fake punt the first half. All right, there's going to be the fake and the toss out there to Page, and he's looking to go throw another one. But he pulls it down and down the side while he goes, Kenny, and they're going to get him uh, out of bounds. I believe he's going to be short. It looked like he might have been looking to throw it. Well, they, they set up the same play, but he, it was run all the way. Fourth and about three yards to go for the Warriors, and it looks like the Warriors uh, are going to punt this one away. There goes Obey out the snap. Busby's on the punt. Of course, now we know that they are capable of faking one of these. We've seen them try it once tonight already. And they've done it with success during the year. Well, let's just see what happens. Well, you'd better believe Brookhaven's lined up waiting on a fake. All righty, fourth and three. There's a good snap. Busby puts a foot, put a foot in it and gets a... Scooped up on the run by the return man. He caught it down around the 30-yard line, and he's going to get close to mid to the. Well, see where they spot it. Got one official standing down here on the 45, but the move is close to midfield. No, nope, they're going to put him out of bounds at about the 46, I believe. We're at 3.14 to go in the third. Wayne County trails 31 to 25. And Brooke Haven's got some mighty good field position right here. They're at the wrong 46 yard line of the first and 10. Yeah, first and 10 and a six point lead. And uh, three minutes and 14 seconds on the clock, Marshall. This one's going to go down to the wire, it looks like. We've only had one turnover tonight. That was against Wayne County, right? Yes. Brooke Haven hasn't turned it over. But there's a. Uh, 
yard, a couple of yards, and some big hitting out there toward the end of that thing. Kenny, it's a little pushing and shoving going on. Perry, I think Norris will just back out there hiding around. Bless his heart. He's playing with all he's got. Give the guy a couple of yards. He's going to bring up second down and eight. They're uh, at the own 49 yard line. We'll say second and seven for Old Brook. Three oh seven to go in the third quarter. Old Brook up 31 to 25. Looking at the second seven from the wrong 49 yard line. There's a quarterback's going to keep it and going to be tackled behind the line of scrimmage for a yard loss or so. So good penetration that time. We got penetration right off the uh, right off the bat, and that's going to move them back a yard. Actually, move them back two yards. All right, it's going to be a third down nine. Two fifty to go in the third. Wayne County twenty five. Brookhaven thirty one. Brookhaven's trying to convert on a third and nine right here. Two thirty-eight and counting in the third. Big third down play right here. Back to throw. There's some pressure. The pass oh, is dead. And it's, it's intercepted by Gary Sibley. Gary Sibley's at the 30. He's at the 20. He's at the 10. Five. Show him a goal. that back about 47, 48 yards. What a play. And if you look at the spot, Marshall, the ball is nosed against the goal. <laughs> that big man can run, you hear me? He was churning it up. He had a rooster tail. <laughs> man, wow. what a great play. All righty. Kind of quiet over there on the Brookhaven side. The Wayne County side is going nuts over here. We got a timeout. So uh, let's take a 30 second break to the station, catch our breath, and be right back after this one word from our sponsor. Well, inside the one on the Sibley interception return, two to one. We got the big package in. And uh, let's see if we can see if we're out there. No. Uh, we got the big package in. Quentin Bibbins is going to be in there to uh, tie it in. We got the freshman running back in there. We got uh, WC Washington in there. And Javon Jackson is going to keep the quarterback sneak. And a touchdown, Wayne County. Is going to get the touchdown. Is there a flag on the play? No. Okay. All right. So it's tied up, Kenny. 31 to 31. Wayne County needs to get the extra points. They're going to have to go for two. I don't guess they have to, but they're going to go for two. We've had a little trouble. Yeah, we lost our kicker. Busby's done a really good job, but he's only been doing this for about three weeks. And so Wayne County's going to try to go for two. We've got a tie ball game, but 2.13 to go in the third. Wayne County can take a two-point lead right here on the conversion. Jackson's going to keep it. He's going to try to get up to the left side. He's going to get in. And Wayne County takes the lead. 33 to 31 with 213 to go in the third quarter. So we're going to take a 30 second break to be back to the station and we'll be back up with just one word from our sponsors. something. We're seeing these kids, these warriors down here, they are jumping up and down, they're running, they're encouraging, the, they're exhorting the fans, and the fans are responding, and I tell you what, these kids are having themselves a good time tonight playing a football game. They really are. There's going to be a kick that's going to hit the ground at the 25, at the 15, and the return man is going to come up the field with it and going to be tackled across the 30, maybe at the 31 or 32-yard line. So, Brookhaven will be back in business with a first and 10 at the wrong 31 or so. 2.05 to go in the third. Wayne County up by two, 33 or 31. I like, I, I like 
like this business, don't you? <laughs> look, you look at it, but I mean, there's no need to panic. It's only a two-point lead. It's uh, just a one-score game, and uh, they've got the field goal kicker to take the lead if they get out here and get in range. All they got to do is get around the 40 and uh, let him kick it from midfield. Lane Kane's hanging in there. All righty. He's going to be the hand out to Leggett. He's going to be hitting the backfield and then get away and get out across the 35-yard line. He has got to be gassed. I you, he, he gets a lot of yards after contact. I bet he's had 25 carries tonight. I'm going to second about six yards to go, 145 to go in the third. Trish Wright for the Panthers. Got a single safety here. The quarterback's going to go around the left side. They're going to get himself a first down. He's going to be, oh, no, he may not. He's going to be right at it, Kenny. You probably, he may have had it. It's 123 to go. Looks like a first down. 123 in the third. Wayne County, 33. Panthers, 31. It is a first down. They're out about their own 44 yard line. Or here's Brooke Haven with a first and 10. One oh seven to go in the third. Wayne County up by two, 33 to 31. First round playoff action. Wayne County. There's a leg with the handoff and down the outside he goes and gets a first. Well, no, he's not going to be quiet in the first down. Crosses into Warrior Territory. We'll see where this fight is. It's going to be close. Yeah, he's going to be about the 47. If it's a 46, that's a first down. First down it is, Kenny. You got the call. 52 seconds to go in the third quarter. Wayne County up 33-31. Brookhaven on the move inside Wayne County territory now. At the Wayne County 46-yard line. All righty, here come the Panthers. Got a whistle blowing here. Time out on the field. They're going to just determine the clock. The 25 second clock ran out. What they're going to say, let's see what they're... They're just going to reset it, I guess. Just reset it and give them another 25 seconds. No time out. 25 second clock runs out. This, like you said, started over the field again. Well, in the book, Abe. Remember, I used to lift the alarm up on the record player and move it so you can play in the record over and over again. First and 10 at the 46 of the Royals. Inside a minute to go in the third. Royals 33, Brook Haven 31. There's a handout to leg it up the middle, and he's running hard, and he's going to get inside the 40. They've got a second down and two or four yards to go. We'll see where else we'll get spotted. More well, like two yards to go, second and two. Brooke Haven's on the move. Wayne County's trying to get a man off the field. They do. 28 seconds to go in the third. Wayne County's up by two, 33 to 31. Quarterback's going to keep it, and he's going to get himself a first down as he moves inside the 35-yard line, down to around the 33 or so. Well, he put on the brace when Bivens broke through that line of scrimmage. I mean, you could hear the squeeze up here. <laughs> <laughs> There's no about this one. It's a first down. We're inside 10 seconds to go in the third. Wayne County's up by two, 33 to 31, and that's going to bring the third quarter of this first round playoff action to a close as your Wayne County High School Warriors lead the 10 and 1, number one seed out of District 3. Brookhaven Panthers, 33 to 31, with one quarter to go. Here's a 30 second break to the station, and we'll be back after this word from our sponsors. Now, here's a couple of scores around. Looks like uh, after three quarters, they're tied up in uh, Picky End, 28 to 28. West Jones is up 14 to 10, and Hattiesburg is up 28 to nothing in the stone. Looks like in the, in the third. All righty, here comes old Burke with the first and 10 at the Warrego 33-yard line. There's the toss to Leggett, and he's going to be hit about the, <laughs> the scrimmage. He's going to lose a yard, maybe, Kenny. Let's see here. Now, 
going to be right at the line of scrimmage. Second and ten. Fourth quarter action here. Just starting the fourth quarter. Wayne County is up by two with Old Brooks inside the Warrior territory with a second and ten at the Warrior 33. <coughs> We've seen everything here tonight so far, and I don't know how much more is left to see, but I'm sure there's plenty back to throw. There's a pass that's going to be caught, and a tackle broken, and a few defenders dragged down to the 10. So that's going to be a first down that they're going to see the 11-yard line. I mean, a little slant pass there. Brian Jackson checks in to play a little defensive back. i tell you what, uh, Stephon Ford's taking some... Pretty big hits out there tonight defensively. He's uh, had to come off Jackson and replaces him. First and 10 at the 11. The 11 0 3 to go in the contest. Wayne County up by two. <coughs> That's going to be the quarterback's going to keep it. And he's got some room. Can he run up the middle? And he's going to get inside the five down to about the one or two yard line. I don't know if he's going to have the first down or not. Now he's going to, going to put him about the three. Okay. Second down. Two yards for a first down. Three yards for a touchdown. Second two. Kenny's got the call on that. Just right there. There's a out to leg it. And he's going to get himself into the end zone for a touchdown for the Panthers of Brookhaven. So with 10.22 to go in the contest, Brookhaven takes a lead. This thing has been back. I don't know how many lead changes we've had tonight, but it's been a bunch of them. It sure has. And uh, it's going to be at the end. It's going to be who makes a mistake in this ball game. 33 to 37. Old Brooks up. Off the PAT. There's the snap. The kick is up and it's blocked. And uh, so that makes it. It's 33 to 37. So Wayne County blocks the PAT. Let's stay here with it. Uh, we have seen big defensive tackles, intercept passes, and run them 40 or so yards down to the line. We've seen end around passes and reverses and com big long completions and outstanding efforts and runs. We've seen it all here tonight. And it's been a great, great sure effort by this Warrior. Both teams, I mean, are playing well. Uh, both teams are playing well. Playing hard. It's about to the point, like you said, if you get the ball at this point in time with the with this uh, with this four point game, at 10:22 to go in the contest, if you get the ball, you really need to score. Right, and you know, here for Wayne County, field goal is not going to help you. You're going to have to you need to get down and get a just let it go, boys. This goes into the end zone, and Wayne County will have it first and ten. <laughs> He's been kicking that thing deep all night. That kicker looks like he weighs about 115 pounds. Well, he's got a big leg. Now Wayne County's got to go 80 yards. Take some time off the clock. But both teams, nobody's had a really long, sustained drive. They've had some long drives, have like nine plays, but they're, uh, uh, I guess that last drive by Brookhaven was probably the most time-consuming drive of the night. Don't so, see Washington's in the backfield. Go ahead, Ken. No, we just got to find some more gas in the tank here. <coughs> All right, Jackson's moving to his uh, right. He's going to try to turn up field, and he puts his head down and gets about five, gets out to the 25-yard line. There's a fella you just wonder how he can uh, possibly have any gas in his tank. I mean, he's playing defense, he's returning, he's throwing, he's heading off, and he's running. I mean, we've talked about him all year long, though. Tell you what, there is, there is nobody in our district, or I don't think either district, that, that, that would deserve a MVP player or more than, than Zabai. I agree. That's going to be the handoff up the middle to W.C. Washington, and he's going to be hit at the line of scrimmage. He's going to be right there at about the 25, if they give him the 25. He's going to bring up third down, five yards to go. 9.36 to go. <coughs> Boy, we said it time and time again. We've had some huge third down conversions tonight, and here's one right here that we really need to have. Third and five from the 25, and Wayne County jumps. So that's going to cost them five. 
It'll be third and ten. That one hurts. <laughs> 920 to go in the contest. Brookhaven 37. Wayne County 33. Because if you don't get your first down here, you're going to give them the football in good position. They're rolling offensively. We will have to have an outstanding defensive series. Jackson's moving to his left. He turns up field. They're going to get him at the 20. So it's going to bring up fourth and 10. So we really don't have any choice here but to punt it away. <laughs> But there's uh you got plenty of time left. You just what you gotta do is you just gotta stop Brookhaven. They're gonna get the ball over in a spot where they're not gonna wanna punt the football. They're gonna wanna Busby's got a that snap wheels it in, it's gonna be kicked and out to the 45 yard line and uh, we're gonna down it inside the 45 at the 44 so he couldn't get it across midfield. So great field position for Brookhaven and here they are with a four point lead, 37 to 33, 8.25 to go in the game and they've got the ball inside more of the territory. <laughs> You know, Mosley came on at the Stone County game when we lost Mosley for the year. And he has never done this, and I mean, he's done a real good job hey, for us this year. Man, listen, no complaints about that youngster, let me tell you. He's really put his heart into it. He laid himself on the line for his teammates. All righty. Need a big defensive stand here if we ever got one. That's going to be the handoff up the middle of the leg, and he's breaking tackles and throws it back to the quarterback, and they catch him back to the 50. Leggett couldn't find anywhere to go, and I just think he was just trying to improvise there and threw it back to the quarterback. Kenny, they wound up losing about six yards on first downs, got him back to the 50 with a second. I don't think that was by design. Yeah, it kind of looked like a flea flicker, but I believe it was like you said. It was all, it wasn't by design. All right, first and 15. Balls at midfield. Bill Cavens looking at a, excuse me, a second and 15. All righty. Back to throw. There's a quick pass out there. It's going to be caught and uh, tackled as he moves inside the 40 to about the 39. It's going to bring up third down and about seven. Scoreboard says six yards to go. So third and six, 7.34 to go and counting in the football game. Wayne County trails by a score of 37 to 33. Balls on the Brookhaven 40. They got to get six yards for a first down. They got basically two plays to do it, I suppose. Wayne well, County faithful cheering the defense on. They can pick it up on the microphones as we are in the stands. Clock's down to zero. I guess they got a timeout called. I don't know. Well, they just did it like they did last time. They just said it did it again, but they're making burn a timeout this time. So we're going to take a 30-second break to the station and be back after this word from our sponsor. First round playoff game. Wayne County trails 37 to 33. Third and six for the Panthers, and they're at the Royal 40. Now here we go. <laughs> Need some defense. We've been playing lights out. Okay, quarterback's moving to his right. Going to throw one downfield. It's going to be incomplete. Going to bring up fourth down and six. So let's see if old group decides to go for it, Kenny. You know, you're sitting here on a, on a four-point lead. There's no reason not to go for it. If you don't make it, well, it looks like you're going to punt it. If you don't make it, you sure give them some momentum. You give Wayne County a lot of momentum. Yeah, I guess with, with uh, right at seven minutes left, it is, you know, maybe we can time to punt, but it's also a good place to run a fake. Too. Yeah, and maybe we can get the ball and run about a seven minute, a six minute, and 655 drive and score and win the game with a bird. <laughs> There's a snap, and he's going to punt it. He's going to punt a high, nice kick that's going to go out of bounds. I don't think it goes out of bounds. No. Yeah, they're going to mark it out of bounds yeah. out there around the eight. Or nine, so he's got to be inside of ten. And, you know, you can't argue with that. They did a good job. They got a good kicker. I mean, <clears throat> if you kick that thing in the end zone, you don't really gain much. But if you kick it outside the ten, inside, inside the ten, that's that's a big play. 
and it's a third down. It's spotted at the at the eight. So ninety two yards to go to Coach Hill drive to the land of milk and honey. <laughs> Six forty five to go in the contest. Wayne County trails thirty seven to thirty three, but they've got the ball at their own eight. Ninety two yards for the first down. Jackson's going to keep it around the left side and break a tackle or two, Kenny, and he's going to run harder still. Going and takes a huge hit as he crosses the 10. Kind of like the cut me, mate. Cut me. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's uh, picked up three yards, maybe. I believe you're right. Uh, 6.24 to go. Second seven for Zabiron Jackson and company. I believe that's your Damien Williamson in the running back, the freshman. Nope, nope, that's J.J. Walker, the big sophomore running back. He's found some tough sledding between those tackles tonight, J.J. has. His game's usually up the middle, but now there's a lot of... That's going to be against Wayne County, I believe, Kenny. Call timeout. That's one of those 25 second clock things. So there's a timeout. I think ours is more like 15 seconds. <laughs> they laid the flag off. Can we get a do over two? Are we going to get one? But we got to burn a timeout to get it. Yeah, that leaves us with one timeout. <laughs> We're going to kind of stay with the action here. We got six minutes, so it's six minutes and three seconds to go in this football game. Wayne County's behind, 37 to 33. Got the ball second and seven on their own 11. You got a nice long drive here, Kenny, and score this thing with a clock expiring. Wouldn't that be nice? Sure <laughs> We've left down here crying too many times. <laughs> We've won a couple down here. Yeah. After the night, we leave here with tears in our eyes yeah. and a trail of Kleenex back to Lanesboro. Yeah. We come here six and five, playing a ten and one team. It's a super ten team, and we're taking them. We're giving them all they want, buddy. I guarantee you, Lane County is giving them all they want. Jackson's looking to throw, they push him out of the pocket. Kenny, they're going to tackle him at about the ten. So it's going to bring up third down and long for Lane County. Not that long. Been long, but it's from where it is, it's a long way to go. It's third and third and eight. From the ten for Zabine Jackson coming again. You said it. Big third down conversions all night long. And man, if we ever needed one, we need it now. Got to have it. Looks like they're getting ready to run a car and books over here with this uh we may not get the playoff. We did. And it's fumble. Fumble snap. Book Haven's gonna Jackson's going to get on the ball in the end zone. That's going to be a safety. So that's going to make it 39 to 33. We're going to have to kick the ball away. They snapped it. They were running out of time. We were down to about one second on the 25 second clock, and they rushed the snap, had to to get it off, and it went over Jackson's head, and all he could do was follow it in the end zone. So that's a two point, two point, uh, cost us two points, and we got to kick the ball off from our own 20. But I'll tell you what, Kenny, it's a six point game. Still a six point game. So a touchdown and an extra point, a, a limit for Wayne County if they can keep, if they can get this football back. <coughs> well, let's see, we're going to, how are they going to approach this thing? Is Busby going to punt it or kick it off the, kick it off the tee? I don't think in our case it's going to matter a whole lot. I don't think uh, our guys are, Busby was trying to figure out. <laughs> He's probably never seen it on Nick never seen it kick from after a safety. Well, he's gonna punt it. Here he goes. It's a pretty good punt. It's gonna be caught down here at the 42 yard line and we'll fill up the field and Wayne Kane's gonna get him at about the 46. Yard line, so Old Brook will have the ball in Warrigal territory first and ten at the Warrigal 46 or so with five away to go in the football game and a 39 to 33 lead to the Panthers of Old Brook. Hell. 
you, Jim. See if you get another interception and run that thing back down at about the one yard line. I think what you're going to see is a lot of ground play. They may, uh, they may, may fool me and, and uh, put the ball in the air, but I think you're going to see them trying to run time. Yeah, they're watched in there pretty tight, Kenny. You're right. And that's what they do is run the ball. There's a toss to the right side, and there goes Reagan. And he, he goes, Kenny. He puts his head down, and I tell you what, he's going to get about 9 or 10 on that first down, Kenny. And that's really all they need to do is keep the ball out of their hands. It's a six-point game right now. They go down and get a field goal. It's just about out of reach for us. And it's first and ten as they get the ball down to the 36-yard line of the Warriors. First and ten. Rock stopped at 501. He went out of bounds. 39-33. Can't say enough about our kids and our coaches. What an effort tonight. There goes Leggett up the middle. He's going to get a first down inside the 35. He'll be down to about the 33-yard line. 4.53 and counting. Gain of three yards on the play. Second down and seven for the Panthers. Second seven at 4.44 and counting. Wayne County down six, 39 to 33. Turnover. We're down to one timeout. That's all we've got left. And hand the ball to Leggett. And that's what they do. And he's going to have another game. He gets inside the 30 yard line. Third and three from the 33 yard line. Old Brooks deep inside the uh, Royal Territory right here with four minutes to go in the football game and they're up 39 to 33 and they're doing what they do best. I don't know why they're empty in the backfield right here on third and third and three, but they do. They're going empty. Uh, and the quarterback's gonna keep it running around the right side, and I guess that's why. He's gonna get a first down and then some and get out of bounds and that's going to stop the clock as he gets down there. I'll see where the spot, I can't tell, but it's 3.45 to go in the football game. Third and three. Call the 21-yard line, first down for the Panthers. The Royal 21, Panthers have got a 39 to 33 point lead here late in the fourth quarter. First round playoff action. Wayne County's fought their way into this thing. Got a little help from Stone County to get in, and they've given Brookhaven all they want. And there's uh, Leggett's going to make one miss him in the backfield and get close to the 10. So he may he's going to be close to first down yardage. Got a penalty fire. Got a hold over here on the outside. Well, I ain't going to say it couldn't come at a better time, but it sure came at a good time. Yeah, it's going to be a spot foul for the 15 and put the ball back out around the 25. It will be, uh, still be first down. First and 14, I think. The thing that's going to save us now, Marshall, is going to be a turnover. Yeah. And. All righty, here we are, 324. First and uh, 12 from the 25. Stone County beat West 24 to 14. Laws up 42 to 35 over Picky Union. Wayne County gets the stop at the 25 yard line. So that's a good defensive play. Listen to this. Uh, Hasbro's up 43 to nothing after three. Stone County, Stone County wins 24-14, and Lowell is up 42 to 35 over Pickle Union. All right, Stone County won. Mm -hmm. With 131 to left, Lowell's up 42 to 35. That's a shocker right there. 2.48 to go in the contest. It's uh, second and 13 from the Warrior 25. The Panthers have the lead in the ball down here. Back to throw. There's a pass to a wide open man down there in the end zone. Went over his head. And that's going to stop the clock, Kenny, which is a pretty big deal. Yes, it is. It's third and 14 now. Ball from the 25. Wayne County can hold them here and keep them back out of this field goal range. 
they can get the ball back with a couple of minutes to go and have a chance. Uh, two, four, they're, they're within their field goal kicker's range. I think when they got inside the 35, that uh, he can reach a, he can reach a goal post. Yeah, I'd like for him to have to kick it from 35 or better. But anyway, it's going to be, if he misses it, the ball goes 20. 20. Third down. Third down and 13 from the 25. Back to throw. There's a pass, and it's uh, caught. No, incomplete. Incomplete. That stops the clock. Hey, I tell you what, they could have. We got to wait. We got to wait for the pass at the We got to him early. All right, kid. We're going to see if he can make it. You said he could. Let's see. I hope you're wrong. I don't hope you're wrong. I do, too. <laughs> How long is this thing going to be? It's going to be a... 42, 42 yarder. yarder. Well, you know, we've had our kicker. Those we could kick him from that far. Why can't theirs? He's got a big leg on him. All righty. 39 to 33. 2.29 to go in the contest. This could pretty much be a two score ball game for Wayne County. There's the kick. It's up, and I'll tell you it's what, it's no it. good. It's no good. So, Wayne County's going to get the ball at their 20 with 2.29 left in the game. This thing is not over. It's going to the wire. And I'll tell you what, we're talking about scores coming in from Mississippi and our south down here that we were talking about. There have been a lot of games going to the wire. Stone won 24 to 14. Law was up to 42 to 35. They were picking in with 131. And right now in Brookhaven, Mississippi, Wayne County trails 39 to 33, but they got the football at their own 20 with the first and 10 and 229 to go in this football game. A score will tie it up, and Wayne County will have to go for two. Do they go for two or do they give it to Busby and let him try? Man, I don't know. I, let's just hope we have to find out. Yeah. Okay, here we come. Brian Jackson's going to keep it up the middle, and he's going to run so hard. Kenny tried to jerk loose of that and get a couple of yards. He was, uh, the defender had him by the ankle, and he looked like a fox caught in a trap. He was just jerk, 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 and trying to get away, and he couldn't quite do it. He did get a couple of three yards, though. And I guarantee you one thing, this is four-down territory, even no matter where you are, if you're Wayne County right now, trading with this amount of time inside two minutes, Jackson's back to throw, and he's going to fire one out there. It's going to be over the head. Uh, let's see, is that Ballard got his hands on it, but he could not quite make the catch. Third down and eight yards to go from the 22. We're inside two minutes, Kenny. What a football game we have had here at Brookhaven. A lot of folks didn't think it would be, but my friends, we've had it. We've had a good one. All righty, third down and eight. From the 22, is so Brian Jackson's your quarterback. W.C. Washington is your running back. What's it going to be? We've got two to make eight from their own 22. 158 to go. Back to throw. He's going to fire one out there. So the count, count. Catch is made by the Aries Royal. First down, Wayne County, out across the 30-yard line. He'll say it's at the 31. First and 10 for the Warriors. They trail 39 to 33. But they're still in it with the ball with 152 to go. Kenny says they got one timeout left. All righty, here comes Jackson and company. Going to hand the ball to Darius Royal. He gives a little. Cannot get back to the line of scrimmage. Gave it on the speed sweep. It wasn't the speediest sweep I've ever seen. It was a real smooth on the exchange. Going to lose about three or four yards, maybe five. Clark is running at 126. Ball's on the boy with 27. Wayne County's offside there. That's a procedure call, a motion, whatever you want to call it. It's going to cost them five. What a game, what a night. I'm proud of these kids and these coaches. They have given it a good shot and they're still firing away down there. Second down and 20 from the 22. Jackson's looking to throw. He's going to tuck it up and run it, Kenny. He's going to break a tackle or two and be tackled at the 26 yard line. It's going to be third and about 16. Third and 16. We're inside a minute to go, Kenny. Ball's on the 26. 45 seconds to go in the football game. Back to throw. Jackson's flushed out of the pocket. Fires one downfield. Tries to get his roll over. This is incomplete. He got pushed out of bounds here. There should be a flag. 
We don't get the flag. Stops the clock at 34 seconds. It's fourth and 18. Fourth down and 18. Wayne County trails 39 to 33 with 34 seconds. Last timeout. We're going to stay with the stay with it right here. Use the last timeout. I tell you what, there's been some exciting games down here, and this has certainly been one. I would like to return their Jimmy John phase of the tour. <laughs> yeah, that would be sweet. But I tell you what, win, lose, or draw, I'm so proud of these kids and these coaches. They've come down here and they have given it 150%. They've given all they had and then some. And what a game they have played. They will have left it all on the field tonight. Yes, sure. they have. Yes, they have. All righty, this is your ball game right here. 34 seconds to go. Wayne County's down 39 to 33, and it's the fourth and 18. Back to pass. That is the pass to Darius Royal. Here he comes, Kenny. He's going to be held short of the first down. Ball's on the ground, and Brooke Haven's got it. That's going to be your ball game right there with 24 seconds to go. We're going to kind of stay with it right here. Royal uh, is giving it all he had, as they all have all night. Tell you what, he got all of it but about three yards. What an effort. One more big effort for the Warriors. Unfortunately, I'm afraid that's going to do it. we got just a matter of time right here with the 24 seconds. I think you're going to see Tommy Compton's quarterback take a knee here. Again, I just can't say enough about this team. I mean, they have been through so much and have lost so many along the way. And I tell you what, they were, they were right there with the Super Team team, the 10 1 football team tonight. And that's, uh, that's, that's going to do it. That's going to be your ball game right now uh, for the night. Wayne County uh, 33, Brookhaven 39. Uh, tell you, what, with the, go ahead, Bob. Just, uh, you know, great effort tonight. You couldn't ask for your kids to do more. And uh, you, you just couldn't get any more out of them. And you had a season where you lost 15 kids. Yeah. Uh, the injuries. And uh, I'll tell you what, it's, uh, it's a credit to the staff and credit to these kids. I just couldn't be more proud of them. Uh, when, with the loss tonight, the 2017 Warrior campaign comes to a close. I can't say enough about this staff and this group of young men who have truly made us all Wayne County proud through all the adversity they faced this year. Their resolve <clears throat> never wavered and they continued to man up and move forward again and again. We can all learn from this group as they have exhibited over and over character never quits. So that does it for this year. We're about to head back to Tony at WABO. <laughs> Kenny and I, along with the rest of the WC Web TV crew, thank all of our listeners and sponsors that make what we do possible, and that is bring Wayne County High School Warrior Football to you. We'll see you next year for more Wayne County High School Warrior Football. Take us out of here, Tony. Welcome to uh, Post Game here. Coach, I tell you what, this was one heck of a night for high school football, and I tell you what, you and your charges make us Wayne County proud. I know it. Did, I know you, you didn't. You didn't win a football game, but uh, I mean, you know, you had your chances, man. Have we had our chances? Well, we knew when we came over here we was gonna be in for a fight, and they knew they was in for a fight, and uh, they knew we were. Uh, knew we had been here, and uh, <laughs> right. it was a it was a heck of a heck of a game. This game, Marshall, was just like all season long. I mean, we just fight, scratch, claw, and never quit, never give up. And it was just uh, an example of what the whole season's been like. We saw so much, so many exciting plays. I mean, you guys came out here, and I know you're calling these plays and this stuff y'all put. We had, you know, Riley was doing some stuff people hadn't seen him do, and, you know, to get on these, uh, these then the passes, you know, that was toss it back to page and everything worked and you was just clicking on all cylinders. I mean, just a great scheme that you guys put together. Well, just uh, You know, it's kind of like we say it, it's playoffs and pull all the stops out now because, uh, you know, you win, you go on, you lose, you, you know, you count helmets on Monday and, hey, we just let it all hang out.
What did you tell your kids when it was over with? I, I, I mean, told, what you... told, told them how proud I was of them. I, I told them that, uh, that if I had to ride again, I'd ride with them. And uh, I told them that the lessons that they have learned this year, uh, the seniors, they're going to be able to take that through life. Uh, because they, they, we've stared adversity in the face all year long, and we've overcome it uh, to get where we are. And, uh, you know, for, for a while back there, you know, Marshall, they left us for dead. Uh, <laughs> but we, uh, we just kind of like the Phoenix, we rose from the ashes and, and uh, we started playing well when it mattered at the end of the season. And I'm just, I'm just proud of these guys. Scared the heck out of a 10 and 1 Super 10 team yep. for doggone sure. <laughs> yep, yep. Uh, you know, they, uh, they, they, Quality football team. I mean, Tommy is uh, Tommy's as good a friend as I've got, and I've uh, we've worked together, and well, we talk, and and uh, you know he's he's like a brother to me, and uh, he's a class act, and they've got a class team, and uh, you know it's uh, it's hard to lose, but uh, you know when when it's to somebody with as much class as you have, and it's uh, it's a little bit easier pill to swallow. You know, you said something about the lessons these guys learn. And, you know, there's so much more to football, particularly high school football, than wins or losses. It's great to win. But like you said, this team, you know, I, I've kind of got this thing I've been talking about, you know, this year over and over. It's impressed me. Character never quits. Yeah. And we've seen true character and guts from you and from this team all year long. And I'm 61 years old now. And you talk about what these kids learn this year. Well, I'll tell you what, I may, not have, I may have not have learned – I've had a lot of experiences in my life, but I've been reminded of them, and I've been greatly encouraged by what I've seen out of you and your staff. And I think there's nobody in Wayne County, nobody in Mississippi, nobody knows anything about Wayne, anything about Wayne County football cannot take away from this season and be greatly encouraged by what they've witnessed and seen. And we want to thank you, your staff, and your players for that because you make us Wayne County proud. Thank you. I appreciate it. And, you know, it's just uh, just honored to, to, to be able to, uh, to, you know, be the head coach here and, and uh, and got some great coaches and and uh, but it all boils down to the players and and what's happened, you know, what we do now is it's yeah though but it's been instilled in these yeah. guys over the years and you know about the never quit and the attitude of just play till the last horn goes off and that's what we did tonight. We love you all. We're proud of you. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. We're going to take a break, and we'll be back with The Dream and uh, K-Dog. That's his word from our sponsors. Thank you. Welcome back. Uh, we've had our chance to speak with the head coach of the Warriors, Coach Mangum, and now we've got The Dream, The Machine, Paul Keene with us, statistically speaking. And, Paul, we appreciate you sending us up at half, and we were able to share with the radio audience. So what you got for us here now? Well, uh, about as close as the final score. I mean, Wayne County, 17 first downs, 243 rushing, 149 passing on 9 of 14, uh, only three penalties for 15 yards. Uh, pretty pretty big there. Uh, three punts, 157 return yards, 6 of 12 on third down, 1 of 3 on fourth down. Time of possession, 20 minutes, 34 seconds. Zabrian Jackson, another big performance, 22 carries, 145 yards, multiple touchdowns. Uh, Josh Page, 5 for 36. W.C. Washington, 7 for 30. Uh, Zabrian, 7 of 12, passing for 69 yards. Josh Page, 2 of 2 for 80 yards. Darius Royal, 4 catches for 100 yards. Demetrius Harris, 3 for 42. For Brookhaven, 23 first downs, 308 rushing on 50 carries, 121 yards passing, uh, no fumbles, 6 penalties, 132 return yards, 3 or 5 of 11 on third downs. Time of possession, 23-26. Individually on defense, Jeremy Reed, 13 tackles, Levon Davis, 10, Jeremy Sibley, 9, Perriante Norsworthy, 7, uh, quarterback pressures from Sibley and Davis, interception from Jeremy <laughs> Sibley. That, that was, oh, that oh, was, he was, yeah, that was grass, amazing. <laughs> and he was kicking up grass and out of gas by the time <laughs> it was over with. But, but just great to see him get that play. Kenny? Uh, what a great, what a interesting year and a, and a great year and a great way to finish. I know on a loss, but Dad Gummett, with the, with the stuff that this team's been through and to play like this tonight and take this one of these Super 10 teams to the limit like they did and was in it to the very end. I mean, I couldn't ask for more. I really could. Well, we didn't we didn't lose tonight. We got beat because we ran out of time. Yeah. That's really what it boiled down to. 
Uh, you know, Jeremy Sibley, I told him a while ago, I said, if you laid off that last cheeseburger, uh, <laughs> that, you know, you could have made it in. You know, you got just short. And also, do you realize tonight's the first time that I can, uh, all year, that we did not have a defensive offside penalty. I mean, we didn't jump. I mean, I, I should have probably said, we do four games. And I, we never got it. But, yeah, I mean, great effort from these kids. Uh, you know, I, I told uh, Zabrian, I said, you know, you you have played the hardest and best game you've played all year. It may not be your biggest statistically, but you played hard. And uh, and that goes for all the kids. And, again, you know, this MASH unit they've had uh, since that first week, uh, I thought the coaching staff last year did the best coaching job that I've seen uh, here. This year they did the best job of patching and uh, putting a, you know, using duct tape and, and gorilla glue and whatever they could find to keep a football team piece together, and it showed tonight. I mean, this bunch may feel good, but they played in a ball game tonight. They're going to be sore tomorrow, and uh, now they get to load up and go to Laurel. We get to take inventory, and uh, but hey, we're nine months away from uh, the 2018 season, so I've had a good time this year. It's been a lot of fun watching these kids. It's been awesome. You know, anything you want to close out with for the season? Just a great job and they were playing you always want your team to peak at the end of the season and you can honestly look at these last three games of the year and say the war eagles played the best ball of the season these last three weeks and so that's something good to take into the off season get busy and start building on 2018. ladies and gentlemen we know a couple of things always keep chopping character never quits and we can all be Wayne County proud. We'll see you next year for more Wayne County High School Oregon football.